Cricket has completely reversed course. Now we're basically back where we started. Welcome to The Sewing Report. I'm Jen. This channel is all about making sewing and crafts fun and approachable, except for this crazy week when we've had all this Cricut drama. So we're going to go right to the letter from the Cricut C. Sorry guys, that's what happens when you accidentally hit a button on your mouse and you completely exit out of your program. So we're going to go right to the... Alright, let me... Alright, I think we're having some technical problems here. Hold on a second. Oh, alright. Let me turn off my computer speakers. Sorry guys. Oh my gosh, this is a mess. Alright, let's bring this up. All right, we're gonna start off with the Cricut CEO letter. It says, Dear Cricut Community from Ashish Aurora, CEO. It says, on Friday, March 12th, we announced an intention to limit the number of personal images and patterns that members could upload to Design Space without Cricut Access subscription. We updated this plan on March 16th and shared that we intended to study the matter further. My team has spent the week listening, learning, and taking in a lot of feedback not every decision we make is perfect, but we take every opportunity to learn and get better. So we've made the decision to reverse our previously shared plans. Right now, every member can upload an unlimited number of images and patterns to Design Space for free, and we have no intention to change this policy. This is true whether you're a current Cricut member or are thinking about joining the Cricut family before or after December 31st, 2021. We care deeply about every single member of our community, and it's your creativity that keeps us motivated, excited, and passionate every day about what we're building here at Cricut. Thank you for your candor and your commitment to our company and community. We appreciate you. Ashish Aurora, Cricut CEO. So that's the latest. So Cricut in one week has made three separate policy announcements, and now we're basically back to square one. And I'm really excited for this live stream because we have a special guest right now joining me live. All right, let me bring him on. This is Grant with 3D Musketeers. Grant, welcome. How's it going? How's it going? It's going about as good as it can be with all this craziness. So for all of you not familiar, Grant and I both made some Cricut videos this week about all the Cricut policies. And both of our videos picked up a little bit of, just a little bit of steam online. <laughs> um, Grant is actually a 3D printing guy. You have a small business in the Tampa Bay area. And weirdly, you and I met a few years ago at a small business workshop. And I completely remember you. I remember you were very, you were like, you were the one that did a lot of the talking in this group, and uh, that was really cool. And we talked about LLCs. Boy, that's not a surprise. <laughs> and I rem and I remember talking to you about YouTube at the time, you know. And you seemed kind of interested. You I don't think you had a channel at the time, no. but now you have a channel because I randomly found your video. What? So I want to ask, what initially sparked you to make a video about Cricut Crafts machines? Whenever a company says hey, we're going to be open, we're going to love everybody, it's going to be community-based, and then they just middle finger you. Not a huge fan of that. We wanted to make certain that the voices of the maker community were heard because just like the 3D printers that are running behind me, a lot of makers also have crickets and other styles of cutters, plotters. I mean, literally 3D printers that are pen plotters coming soon. And when you have a company that everybody's adopted because, oh, yeah, that's right, it's 2020 and everybody's at home, their revenue doubled, like from $480 million to $980 million. God, I wish we had that kind of a problem. But when they just screw everybody and are unapologetic about it, you got to get those voices heard. And the more people that are out there saying no, 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 
the more of us can make awesome and continue to try to push toward getting what we were promised all those years ago. So this latest news, Cricket basically did a complete 180 to the initial announcement. What's your like hot take on this latest development? I don't like it <laughs> at all. You still don't like it? Okay. <laughs> I don't like so it, what, no. you, So a lot of people seem kind of satisfied. So you, from your standpoint, probably not. No, they clearly didn't <laughs> think about this the first time, right? Okay. How was there not somebody in their marketing department that said, this is a bad idea. <laughs> don't do this. And now they're just backpedaling. Yes, the makers have won. Mm-hmm. And I'm happy about that. I, I'm happy. <laughs> but they've lost my trust. Okay. I will never buy a Cricut product. I've never really? owned a Cricut product. Yeah, you're, have... you're not like the typical Cricut no. demographic, I would say. I mean, I would do very dumb things <laughs> with a vinyl with a... cutter. So maybe I am, but I am. I don't own one. I have a local buddy that does it here mm-hmm. in Tampa that it gives me a great price. I'd rather support a small business when I can. And to see them do this, it's like, guys, you had no thought process. You thought you're Disney and you can get away with it. You're not, and you didn't. Do you feel like this decision had to do with the upcoming IPO? Absolutely. They want to show that they're bringing in more revenue faster Mm -hmm. so that their their company gets a a higher value. They're just creating golden parachutes for themselves while screwing their end user base. And, you know, if they're going to screw us, they got to take us out to dinner first. And I'm just not comfortable (laughs) with how they handled it. What would, in this situation, what would the dinner be? Like, I don't know, man. (laughs) Although you're in the opposite, is it the baby going to Burns? Okay, something like that. I gotcha. I'm curious. We've seen in the SEC filing that one of the goals that the company has is to increase monetization from current customers, which is what this is. And now that they've announced that they're not going to do that, do you think they're going to try to make up for it in other areas? They're going to do something. Okay. And and, And I'm a little worried about it. You see, you think something is, you think we're not in the clear. (laughs) We can't be, right? Okay. (laughs) They they made this huge push to what is going to be their future investors saying, hey, we're going to get them. We're going to stick the knife in and we're just going to twist it a little bit. And then they loosened up the, the, the handcuffs and said, all right, well, fine. We guess you guys matter a little Mm. bit. You know what really pisses me off is that second to last sentence. We deeply care about every single member of our community, and it's your creativity that keeps us motivated, excited, and passionate every day about what we're building here at Cricket. No, it is not. So you don't you don't buy that? Absolutely not. You keep them motivated, excited, and passionate. The (laughs) money that they're making because they're a for-profit business, and that's how that works. I see. Yeah, because in your original video, you were very, you were kind of going off in Cricket, and you're like, that's not how this works. That's no. not how any of this works. Um, so what do you think, if you had to take a guess, what do you think corporate will roll out in the next couple of years to try to increase monetization? They're going to be locking down uh, the ability to have any third party stuff. I, I, okay. It, it's exactly what the 3D printing industry did. Uh, and Stratasys, for those of you that don't know, they were the ones that kind of had the stranglehold on on this industry. And they basically said, hey, everything is going to come chipped, right? It's going to have DRM attached mm-hmm. to it. You can either pay the price or don't use the printer. We honestly mm-hmm. don't care. And my expectation is these new crickets that are going to come down the line are going to be fitted with some sort of digital rights management so that they can control what you put in your machines. Now, for some people, that might be great, right? Consistency of materials, Mm -hmm. consistency of consumables. There are benefits to this, as long as they don't bend you over on the price. But look what they just did. They were promising from day one a free and open ecosystem to allow makers to make. And ostensibly, 2020 could not have gone better for a company like them. They were poised perfectly, their marketing was perfect for it, and they succeeded in capturing the vast majority of the market. But then they do this thing, and it's like, whoa, 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 hold on a minute. No. And they lost trust. And now that they're 
they're backing up on it. It's like, okay, guys, we, we really didn't mean it. And, 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 and like you said, it feels like that ex-girlfriend or that ex-boyfriend yeah. that realized <laughs> they made a mistake. <laughs> yeah, it's like the, because we were talking a little bit earlier, it's like the ex that dumps you, that comes back a couple weeks later and is like, I really miss you, baby. Let's get back together. I want things to be the way they were. And that's sort of what it feels like. As, exactly a, cust- as. as a customer, I'm, I, as a customer, I'm somewhat satisfied with this for now. I do want to have, I, I don't know if you agree with this, but as far as the good faith goes, I'd like to give them some benefit of the doubt as a youtuber and someone that makes like videos and content i i'm a little put off by the corporate um just the the, like the corporate attitude especially because i have had emails with cricket this week and they they were kind of dismissive when i would write and ask them for uh, i would ask them some questions or ask them if they want i've asked them three times if they wanted to be on this channel and they have declined me every time. Um, In fact, even tonight, um, whenever they've sent me anything, it's been at the same time that they put it out on the other platforms and it's the same thing. So they're not giving me any additional information. And as an ex member of the media, this feels like it's very like, it's very dismissive. Um, It is. They wanted, they wanted this to kind of go away before the weekend so they could like kick back. And I don't think this company is used to like dealing with people like me. They're used to dealing with like the crafty bloggers and crafty bloggers. They're good at what they do, but they are not journalists. And, and as an ex journalist, I think I'm coming at them from an angle that they're just not used to. So I, I don't, I don't think they like me very much. That's uh, that's my impression. And they definitely did not seem interested in, um, working with me in any way or trying to uh, foster any sort of open communication. That's sort of my that's sort of my vibe. Are you surprised though? Because no, I'm not, surprised not at all. Because the, I, I I think they're most worried that they're going to get you know cordially invited to come on a podcast and then yeah. or or a, a live video and get absolutely roasted because yeah. that's what's going to happen in the comments. Because ultimately, what they've done <laughs> is they've broken trust. Right. Even though they've come back and said, all right, fine, we give in, you win. They're still they've still broken that trust and consumers that already have their machines that don't want to get stuck with online only Mm -hmm. software, among many other problems that, that 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 they're moving toward. They are now looking for a way out. Previously, it was like, eh, you know, whatever. I can still yeah, use it. Yeah, it's cool. And I didn't think about the software issue. as a co- mm-hmm. When I bought my maker, it wasn't even a factor. I was just like, okay. And I was planning on getting the paid program anyways. Yep. So I didn't care. But now that all of this is coming out, and now that people are in, looking into, like, the SEC filing and some of the other past uh, company policies, like the fact that they've sued third-party uh, software developers in the past... Um, I don't think Cricket Corporate is liking that we're kind of digging into things. Do you think they hate our videos, if you had to guess? I I hope that our videos were played in their oh, meeting gosh. with all the upper management. They're like, and, oh, F. Oh, we screwed up, and boy, are they mad. What? <laughs> and, and that's the, you know, that's one, I think, good thing about having this type of independent media like YouTube is that... I know for a fact, Legacy Media, they're not picking up this story. But people like us, we can make videos, we can talk about it, we can chat about it on Reddit, and there are things we can do to to get the word out. I do hope this type of action helped. And this does seem to be a testament that being loud does do something. If you speak up enough, it can, it can, it can enable change. So I guess that's that's definitely a good thing. Um, What do you think behind the scenes at Cricket HQ? What's what's going on there this week? (laughs) There are a lot of people filing for unemployment at Cricket. I I would guess their entire marketing department is gone. Oh, gee. Uh, Because honestly, this is this is the definition of a PR disaster. Yeah. You, You came out with something. The industry got mad and then you rolled everything back twice so you said okay fine we give in a little bit here Mm -hmm. take this dog bone go back to making us money 
and we were still mad because it still wasn't a solution, mm -hmm. they went back and just immediately said, you know what, screw this, pretend it never existed. <laughs> yeah, and that's the crazy thing is that if they had just done nothing, we would have still, most of us would have been pretty happy campers. Like if they had literally just not come up with the policy in the first place, because now we're at yep. the same spot we were a week ago, but there's still a lot of really pissed off people, you even after cheated. this statement. You feel cheated and rightfully so. They cheated their customers. They, they said, oh, these sheep, they'll pay, just watch. And then yeah. so they put it out and everyone's like, oh, no, 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 no. And, you know, all of us out there that have a voice, and my voice got four times as large now, which is kind of crazy. Our channel's been growing a lot, and I'm incredibly thankful for all the help you, you, you've assisted us there, too. But everyone that's put out a video about this has gotten some sort of viral reaction Yeah, to it's it. because everyone's been looking for videos mm -hmm. or for people talking about it because it's just been such a, like, a hot topic this week. It's been, yep. it's been, were you, did you have any idea this was going to happen to your channel? Nope. <laughs> we were not prepared for this whatsoever. Were you just like, oh, this is just another one of my industry updates. You know, it'll be. That, that, I, it was an industry update. It came it across industry... us. I'm like, huh, this is kind of terrible. Let's do a video on it. And all of a sudden I'm like, this, this video's hit a hundred. Oh, this video's hit 500. Oh, up. Uh, we doubled our subscriber count in 24 hours. Okay, it wasn't, it was like 50, it went to 100. Yeah. Uh, period, not 100,000 for those watching. Yeah. Very, and, very tiny channel. <laughs> and for everyone watching, Grant really has no dog in this fight. He does, he, I don't think you've ever used a cricket. Your girlfriend is sort of craft. Oh, you have used a cricket? Okay. Yeah. But you don't, they, you're not really in this space. You're more in the tech engineering, 3D printing side. So, you're you don't usually deal with a lot of the crafting community and this is one of your probably your one of your first encounters with a large number of people we may or may not have made lots of cricket parts recently oh wait really hmm. yeah. so are there's, they there's three there's three printed parts hmm. you can do to unlock certain things that cricket locks you down I see for, what you're like going consumables i see what uh, you're going man well this is this has been such a crazy week um so as far as the you had mentioned in a couple of your videos, two points you made are one that you think Cricket is going to sell your data. Um, and then the other point is that I know a lot of people have been defending Cricket, saying they need more money to host our images. But you made a point that they shouldn't be hosting images at all. Can you explain that? Yeah, and so a lot of this comes down to reading that end user license agreement. You know the thing that nobody ever reads and yeah. just clicks agree? Read that. And so... One of the big things in these that it normally says that your data is their property or they have a license to utilize it. So if you are a maker and this is your livelihood and you're mm -hmm. uploading it to Cricut's website to utilize their online only software. Now, mind you, I have not taken all the time to read completely through their, their end user license agreement. So this is speculation at best, but it is common for companies to say that they will own a license mm. to your design and they can use it for whatever they want. Now, this happens a lot in the 3D printing industry where you'll upload a design to a website and then they market it, they make money off it, then you get mad that they didn't even reference you yeah. as the creator. Uh, and, and that can be tough because then it comes down to who actually owns the content. Because what this feels like is I'm leasing a car. I've put a down payment in the form of a machine and then I'm paying to use your software. now. Of course, they roll that back, so you're not paying monthly anymore, but you're still uploading it to their website, which is, it's fishy to me. One, how are you supposed to do events where you're taking your cricket out to, let's say, a farmer's market, where there may not be public Wi-Fi? How yeah. are you, unless you pre-make stuff, which can be tough, how are you supposed to succeed? They need to have an offline version. And, you know, for people that don't have access to... Yeah, internet, a lot of people don't have good internet or even right. internet at all. And, you know, internet should be a commodity, but that's a completely different story <laughs> for another time. But yes, Cricket is looking at ways to get you to that 100% online. Because then they'll just tighten the strings like they did this time. And they'll just say, eh, we don't care. Too bad. Now, in the statement, they've said we have no plans to change the policy... Do you, how concrete do you feel that 
promise is. I want to believe it's real, but you know, how many times in our lives have we heard big businesses telling us certain things before an IPO, right? Because before your, your initial public offering, you can make whatever decision you want. Mm -hmm. It's your money. But as soon as you have investors and people that own shares of your stock, now your decision making is more controlled by them, right? Because if you make a decision that your stockholders don't like, they short your stock. Mm -hmm. Look at everything that's been happening with Wall Street bets on, on yeah, well, Reddit and GameStop. We should stock. get this out to Wall Street bets. <laughs> oh, to short the stock? Oh. Or, or, I don't know, or something. I mean, mm. look at what Redditors can do, man. It's just it's it, insane. It, 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 it comes down to people that are saying enough is enough. And this community said enough is enough. And people mm -hmm. like you, people like me, we said enough is enough. And again, like I said, I don't even, I don't have any skin in this game yeah. and it still pisses me off because Yeah, you I don't make cards happen. or anything or you know, you're not making HTV shirts with uh, no. any any sort of uh, hearts and stuff on it or something. We have a laser. I mean, we could do cards, that. But... You know, uh, Grant and I do live close to each other, so we yeah. could craft together at some point. We should. We, we totally should craft. Should. What if I do, what if we do a video like teaching engineers to craft? Oh my God, I would love it. <laughs> and then you guys are making, um, you guys are making like Mother's Day gifts or something kind of, we get you guys to do something kind of ridiculous. Maybe we could do something. It could be like a company retreat for 3D Musketeers. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, I, look, we, we are a company of just completely crazy people yeah. that will jump on ideas. Like the fact that these videos are going gangbusters. Yeah. We're doubling down on content. We're creating more content. And oh, yeah, there's a hot take coming out that I filmed Ooh. about 45 minutes okay. before this live stream. And Grant's, <laughs> all right. So, yes, if you guys have not subscribed to Grant's channel, 3D Musketeers. And Grant, I would say, I will say that you should keep the glasses. I like the glasses. I think they're kind of a good trademark for you as your, your thing that you can... And then when you eventually do merch because you're so famous, then you do t-shirts with like you with the glasses on. That's what I'm thinking. Oh, and the cat, come on. Oh yeah, I don't know the backstory with the cat, but we'll have to get that later. But I did see the cat. I think cats are awesome. Um, so as far as being a Cricut customer goes, what do you think customers should, um, how, what can we do as a community to kind of keep these companies from pulling moves like this? Is there anything we can do? I mean, you, you make your decisions with your wallet, right? Okay. And letting your voice be heard, calling them. Like in, in all the videos that we're posting, we have all their social media accounts. Tweet at them, okay. call them, hit them up on, on Facebook, Instagram, <clears throat> Twitter, all of that. Uh, it, that is where we can get our voices heard because otherwise they don't care. Mm -hmm. um, if I was a Cricut user, if I had a Cricut machine, once it's end of life hits, mm -hmm. it's time to look elsewhere. I saw someone's okay. uh, comment came up on the screen. Yeah, um, so yes, this is a good thing about StreamYard. Yeah, so Ken's creations, Ken is actually an ex-Cricket influencer. So he's got a bit of the, oh. the tea. And uh, he says they've been owned by the Perot. Remember Ross Perot? Ross Perot, yeah. Ross Perot, yeah. yeah. What I don't remember, even remember when he ran for president, but it was a very long time ago. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Cricket, and Cricket does have kind of a history of... Uh, doing things i guess they bricked customers machines back in the day with uh their other software i think it was called like creation studio or something like that um yep. and then they also are craft room i think and then they also have been known to th sue third party software um, oh, yeah. creators so i don't know what's coming down the pipe that's the crazy thing is that they if they just done nothing at all we like we would be none, none the wiser today and they yeah, would and not have gotten any bad publicity i my expectation here is they're going to be launching a new variation of their machines coming out likely in 2022 mm -hmm. that require a subscription but since you're if you're buying the machine knowing about the subscription mm -hmm. from the beginning then there is no hard feelings here yeah. right i have made a transaction with a company understanding that there's a subscription involved and I would have expectations that I'm going to get better software updates. You know, like having the ability to do an offset. Yeah, that would be, yeah. <laughs> Which I know, guess just came out it just this came out. week. Yeah, this has been so, this has just been such an insane week. I don't even know. Um, and I will say as someone who is a YouTuber in the crafting and sewing space, it I 
from what we've heard from ex-influencers like Ken's Creations, shout out to him, uh, Auntie Tay, and also Leah Griffith, Cricut does not like their influencers to promote any competitor's products. So if those influencers don't stay within that boundary, then they, I guess, do not want them working with Cricut. I mean, that's, I mean, that's to be understandable. I think to, I don't think, I feel like Cricket would never do this channel because I'm not in their like stable. And I no. think company, from what I've seen with, when companies are in the midst of crisis PR, when they're doing any sort of media, it's got to be in a very tightly controlled situation. And that's not what I would offer them. So I know there's no way in hell they would ever come on the sewing report. I've already asked them three times. They have declined. Although they did say in this most recent email, they said, please consider us for future opportunities. And I was like, what? I don't know what else. Yeah, I don't know what that would be. Um, I don't know. I So as a customer and someone that's promoted the product, as a customer, I'll probably still use it until my subscription runs out. After that, I would probably look into something else. But as an influencer, and I still really hate that word, yeah. I don't <laughs> I, I don't feel compelled to give Cricket any more free publicity, especially after reading in the SEC filing where they were bragging about the fact that they got low cost in free publicity. Mm -hmm. So that's from people like me who I'm not, I'm certainly not getting paid to promote Cricket. I did it because that was the product I chose for myself. Right. And I, I, I mentioned this in a previous live stream. I spent $1,000 on Cricut stuff. Cricut Whoa. brand stuff. $1,000. My own money. And I was also giving them vi a lot of free advertising. Okay, so should I get a 3D printer instead? Is that you what you're know, saying? <laughs> those printers come as kits. And it took my girlfriend, who's never done a 3D printer, okay. about 10 hours to build one. They oh, make geez. some really cool, like if you have a top-down camera shot as a time lapse, really mm -hmm. cool for that. And they're... Like the instructions are so good. It comes with a bag of Haribo gummy bears and it tells you Ooh. when and how many to eat throughout the process. That's how nice. good the instructions are. But I, I, I recommend if you if you believe that Cricket is not going to do the right thing and we are not here to tell you what to do, yeah. right? You need to make your own decisions. But if you believe Cricket's not going to do the right thing, then you can choose to get rid of your machine now, but realistically the value on them has gone down quite mm -hmm. considerably and the market is now flooded. Supply and demand states, price goes down when there's lots and lots of supply. So keep it until it breaks and then send it to Valhalla a real fun way. Uh, we would love to see Cricket Destruction videos all office yeah, space style. That would actually, you know what, that would be, um, in, in full disclosure, Grant and I were talking about doing something along those lines, but it's it's a moot point now. Because yeah. at that point, there would be no point in sending like a message to Cricket Corporate I'm when there's nothing. I was looking forward when to when it. there's nothing to <laughs> there's nothing to demand. You know what I mean? Like there's nothing. There's really no point. Um, let's bring up another comment. So Ken says they buy the reviews. I don't know. I do not. I cannot speak this is to the. Okay. The, yeah, I mean, the, I would. I, I, I'm guessing that might happen with a lot of companies. I don't know. Oh, and I Why? love Ken said that Glowforge is where the is where it's headed. headed. Do you like Glowforge? No. No, you don't like Glowforge. Okay, I so do why do you disagree like with Ken? I, I don't disagree with him. I don't like Glowforge. I okay. have a I have a laser. I have an 18 okay. by 24 inch 80 watt laser that will run circles around a Glowforge. Glowforges are slow. Their software is objectively pretty darn good, and their material library is okay. But there is a software called Lightburn out there that you can run on cheap laser cutters. Mm. Mine is a cheap. What's like, a cheap? What's grand. like a cheap? Okay, three grand. That's actually for a laser cutter. That's not bad. Oh, you can get them like four hundred bucks, okay. but they need some upgrades to be good. This one, to me, it is the biggest laser that I could fit through a standard size man door, which was the the big deal. So when we were in a, in Wiregrass Mall, we did not have a double door, so it had to go through a standard man door. And uh, it was about two and a half to three grand. I added a nice uh, refrigeration chiller on it. I've had that machine for three and a half years, and we still make our business cards on it to this day. And, and it cuts like butter. And lasers are fun. But I will warn everyone that's looking at lasers right now, do not cut vinyl on your okay. laser. It will release chlorine gas, Ooh. and it will not only kill you, but will hurt okay. the whole time you are dying. Okay, so that. that's, uh, yeah, not not recommended by, <laughs> by Grant. Wow. No. 
That's so okay. I appreciate all the safety tips because I'm I I don't know anything about laser cutters or anything like that. So let's talk about the. I know a lot of people are jumping to competitors like Silhouette or Brother, but yeah. I guess I'm thinking there's nothing stopping those companies from doing the same thing. So are like, does it really matter which company we're going with? You think, or what do you? What's your kind of feel on that? I look at Brother and say, Brother's got their hands in a bunch of different pots. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't know if I'd worry about them. I don't think that these, uh, you know, th th these cutters, to me, I don't see it as being a huge market for them. I think Cricut mm -hmm. owns most of the market. Okay. We look at Silhouette. Silhouette's got a 3D mm -hmm. printer. It's a Delta 3D printer. Uh, so Silhouette is expanding their brand. But yes, we do have a concern that this is going to happen. There are other options though that are less mainstream but come with some you know less mainstream problems right like the software okay software is a big deal it's why if you've never used a laser and you're not really technologically savvy just buy glowforge because they make it easy but you pay for that easy and i think it's the mm -hmm. same deal with with cricket with crickets yeah, same thing with silhouette same thing with brother because there are like these u.s cutters on amazon that are by and large honestly nearing end of life but they're like 400 bucks for a 40 inch cutter and the software is ostensibly going to be hot garbage mm -hmm. but if you can work with something like that or find another way because i'm sure there are other ways you can get better value and it comes down to are you doing it as a hobby where you want it to be easy or are you doing it as a business mm. where you need it to be fast that is a that's some really good information and that's a, and that's a good point i bought the maker because i am i'm not that tech savvy in that specific area so i wanted it to be super like foolproof and I don't make any of my own SVG designs, so I, that's actually why I did end up buying the access plan was because I'm not I'm not sitting there in my computer trying to design SVGs. That's just not what I do. So I wanted to, to buy it from someone else. Yeah, and I'm doing I'm 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 better at like editing, but I'm not great with like trying to make stuff like that. But that's a really good point though, because there's it depends on what level you're at and what your yep. needs are. And for a lot of people, the cricket does fulfill all of those needs. So it does. It does. All right. And I think silhouettes do as well. I, mm -hmm. I, I just kind of looking at some of the other options, I think silhouette to me, uh, I, I'm like looking to say, wow, that is actually affordable enough that I might buy one. You you think you would get a silhouette? <laughs> hmm. I I, I, I think you could so. give it a try. And you know, it, it, it's. I was going to be filming a video all about uh, uh, options other than Cricut, and I was going through Brother's website while I was filming. I'm like, this website is terrible. I can't navigate through this. And I can't yeah, the find... Brother website is pretty. I, I like really the products, bad. but yeah, the website is very like 90s. Have and if you've never seen a Brother um, instructional video that comes with their sewing machines, I have a Brother Serger. It's a type of machine that does um, like the seams of T-shirts and. The video, it comes with, no joke, it came with a CD-ROM that was yeah. made in like 1995. <laughs> and the lady, she had some examples of clothing and it was Desert Storm uniforms. Nice. And, I was, and she had the like short <laughs> frost, she had the short frosted hair, which was a hairstyle my mother had. And it was like straight out of the 90s. So I have made a lot of surgery videos and they've been very popular, I think because brother does not have its own tutorial videos on it and people were certainly they seem to be looking for them yep. so those are some of the most popular videos on my channel i feel like you and i need to do some we're going to talk after this because we would like to do some sort of collaboration since we live close to each other maybe so maybe we could get like three of get all the machines and test them out like maybe run them through some tests brother silhouette cricket and it. just do a very objective, like what you think, especially from an engineer's perspective, because you guys are looking at, you guys are looking at factors that I'm not looking at. I'm looking at like what color it is. And you're looking at, um, you I'm know, how at, fast you know, the machine is or some, you know, or some other metric that I have no clue about. Are they so, running ball bearings or yeah. not? You know, and I'm like at the motion platform. And I'm sitting here like, I don't want the mint color. I want to make sure I get the gold. Like, that's my whole, like, thought process. So I don't know. 
I'm over here looking for all the crazy colors that we can get. You know, oh, I got to bring it onto the screen here. Looking for all the crazy, ridiculous colors that we can get. Because, I don't know, that's just my personality. Uh, I, I am... You're, I think you need crazy. to keep going. I think you need to keep going with it, though, because the videos you've made this week have been really great. I also really liked you did another video about Materialize, which is a company I have no clue what it is. But yeah. in the thumbnail, you're like wiping your tears with dollar bills Money. or something, <laughs> which was yep. really funny. And, and yep. I, that really like caught my eye. So. All right. So let's talk about the Cricket IPO. How mm -hmm. do you think things will go once this company goes public? <laughs> Any... It, 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 this feels this very much like a Facebook IPO to me. Okay. It's going to go, whoop, boom. Okay. Yeah, everyone's going to be buying in because, oh, it's the hot new thing. Okay. Uh, there is part of me that's like, ooh, God, I'd love to see Wall Street bets just do really bad things to this stock. <laughs> well, uh, that Wall Street bets subreddit, man, they are they are making a name for it. Like, it's making a name for itself. Like, they're doing some, some pretty interesting things over there. And do yep. you... Like as far as uh, you know, long you know, long, like how do you feel all of this drama has effect? Do you think it'll have an effect on the IPO, or do you think it'll just be business as usual? I absolutely believe that their IPO has and will be affected. They, okay, they are they have just lost a non-trivial amount of expected revenue, so their company valuation will be considerably lower than what it was previously, right? So if, if they're valued at just under a billion dollars, a billion with a B, just under a billion dollars right now. And this extra uh, software kick would have easily kicked him into the 1.5 mm -hmm. to 1.75 billion dollar, with a lot of that being recurring revenue, which is huge when you're looking at stocks. Because if I have a company that has guaranteed income every single month, that's a good, honest, investment because hey they're just going to keep going right and that's like what materialized they had their whole software division that grew 34 percent during covid but their service bureau side lost a bunch of money and it evened out to where they saw year over year drops and it was a big news thing in the industry i'm like i don't care i i almost lost money in 2020 and no one gives a damn about me i yeah, worked yeah, 120 yeah. hours a week all year no one cared but, uh, you know, realistically, I am expecting this to affect their IPO. Now, what, what I believe will happen is that their stock price is just going to be lower. So it's on sale, which is hmm. not bad. And I've been in the situation, especially with 3D printing companies, where owning a share of stock gets a lot done for you. Because being a shareholder, your questions need to have answers or... You show up at the next shareholder meeting and make your hmm. voice heard. Do you do you think customers should buy Cricket stock? <laughs> I can't give financial advice. Okay, I am we're not a and we're not advisor. We're not, but <laughs> yeah, that's an, I, that's interesting. It, it comes down to: Do you believe in the stock? Do you mm -hmm. like the stock? And if you do, buy it, because it, realistically, Cricket is not going to go anywhere. Right, a company mm -hmm. that is making almost a billion dollars in revenue. It, and during a pandemic where yeah. a lot of small businesses saw themselves falling away, failing, and not, not their faults, but these kind of things happen. Cricket thrived. And I'm expecting them to continue to thrive because people that have adopted their system are likely not going to go away. Just like a lot of people, even if you were pissed about the software, you'd probably pay for it because do you, you don't do want to you, limit yourself. Do you think all of this will have an effect on long-term like customer loyalty or just the you know who ends up replacing their machines still even still a lot of people are saying i'm i'm done with this company i don't trust yeah. them and that that says a lot because crickets cricket really relies on having a loyal fan base they do they do and, and all of these manufacturers rely on having a loyal fan base they have to look at how can we differentiate ourselves from each other i think cricket just lost at least 50 percent of potential future recurring revenue because how i mean if the comments on my videos <laughs> are tell you anything any idea cricket is going to be yeah. hurting but 
again, when you're looking at a stock, yeah. that means it's on sale, baby. Yeah. That's a great time to buy it. And maybe that, maybe at this level, are they, like, too big to fail kind of thing? Like There is no such thing as too big to too fail. Too big, okay. So you think there's, what if a competitor, any chance a, comp a new competitor might come on the market? Have you seen the new branding that uh, Brother and Silhouette just put out? No. All right. Free let's... software. Free software. Uh, they're life. all jumping on that. Man, somebody in, somebody in a garage needs to come up with something cool, too. Like, that would be that, you know, that could be a game changer. Like, there's you never know what's going to happen. So I don't know. But and in your original video, you also um, you compared this situation to something with a company called Autodesk. Can mm -hmm. you familiarize, familiarize everyone with what happened with Autodesk? Sure. Autodesk has a program called Fusion 360. It is a free CAD software. CAD, Computer Aided Design, allows you to take your 2D ideas, make them 3D, and put them on one of these bad boys, mm -hmm. a CNC machine, a laser, pick your poison for manufacturing devices, because they utilize uh, file formats that are industry standards. The free version was adopted like mm -hmm. gangbusters by everybody in the community when another company screwed us uh on shape screwed us and they they said hey remember all those designs that you made likely for your own customers yeah we we own them now unless you pay us and then you can get ownership so a lot of us said bye fusion 360 said hey why don't you come hang out with us we're not mm -hmm. gonna do that we're autodesk we just don't care last year maybe it was the year prior recently autodesk said you know that nice free tier that you guys have been hanging out on that you love oh so much? You can no longer export a step file, STEP, which is the industry standard for CAD models. And you can only have 10 models open at a time. And they got rid of collaborative design. And the industry went ballistic. And these are influencers in our industry that have a million plus subscribers and when you look at the maker community itself, especially the 3D printing community, we've been screwed a lot. And we're not a huge fan of even like just whispers of us getting screwed. And the community fought back. Ultimately, Autodesk rolled back the step model. They kept 10 active designs at a time. But what they changed is they said, well, okay, you can only have 10 active designs, but you can deactivate one and reactivate another one. And I'm like, okay, fine that's good enough for me uh, step models that's what you need lack of collaborative space kind of sucks but it is what it is they've got small business tiers that unlock all of that stuff they've got education tiers that unlock all that and quite frankly it's five hundred dollars a year it's not that bad when you look at what cad time is mm -hmm. worth if you know what you're doing cad is a very very lucrative industry to be in and it's one of the big uh, sources of income for 3D Musketeers is when we do 3D models for people. So, yeah, it hurt a lot, and every content creator jumped on this that is in this industry and said, no, here are some other options. Hmm. And one of them was FreeCAD. FreeCAD's been around for a long time, but all of a sudden, they saw their development go from, you know, maybe a hamster walking around to a hamster on cocaine, and they started moving out new uh, features every single day. And, and their, their software has gotten so good where we are looking at it as a company to say, do we want to renew our Fusion 360 membership, knowing that they do these kinds of things, and then instead go to FreeCAD, which literally in the name is free. This is FreeCAD. <laughs> it's not as easy to use, but again, do you pay money and get ease of use? Or do you get it for free and support open source? Because we, built, the 3D printing community is designed around open source. That's how we started, was taking 2D printers and plotters, sorry, ripping them apart for their guts and turning them into machines that could extrude plastic like a hot glue gun. That's effectively what these machines are. They're computer controlled hot glue guns. And seeing companies that lock it down, MakerBot, upset us. And because of companies that have given us such this bad taste, these kind of instances where I see this happening to other industries upsets me. Because I've been in the 3D printing industry for 13 years now, since its commercialized inception in 2008. So to see it happening to another industry, I'm like, no, we can't stand for this. 
because a lot of makers, not everyone can afford a laser. I get it. And lasers are, aren't very apartment friendly. But you know what are? Plotters, cutters, that kind of stuff is crazy friendly for an apartment. And that means a lot of makers have them. And I've been, I, I do want to do embroidery and that kind of stuff too. I, I have an embroidery subject. machine, so we, oh, we can we do some embroidery. I have, an, I have a brother P800. I've done a lot of videos. I'm not, I don't do digitizing or anything like that, but I'm. I've got people for that. Okay, see, you got people, you have people for everything, which is. We do. Yeah, so yeah, granted, I've got. lawyers gotten, too. You have lawyers too. All right, so I'm. Like so patent I, attorneys. Okay, not, so. Not like sue you attorneys, but like people to help you protect okay. your idea. I was going to say, so you can't help me if Cricket tries to come after me or something. You are protected under the First <laughs> Amendment. There all right, is let's, no let's hope so. Come after you. Let's hope so. You know what, though? Uh, media outlets get sued all the time. That's all okay. the time. Frame so I gotta, that uh, cease and desist with pride and put it in the background. So, okay, so one other thing I want to talk to you about. I think part of the reason people were so um, upset about this was because originally it was free. If from yep. the get-go it was paid, I don't think people would have had a problem with it. But like Agreed. you said, with the Autodesk, when you start giving it to somebody for free and then you try to take it away, that's what... That's what kind of sets people off. It's sort of like yep. how newspapers are now trying to get people to to pay for their like the paywall, and a lot of people oh, are not God, doing yes. that. Like, That's so, so it, frustrating. yeah, it, you know. And I was thinking about that too. I think it would be easier for these um, newspapers to team up and offer like a package, like, hey, for this price, you get every newspaper. But like when Bundling. you're paying for, yeah, when you're paying for like sort of like a cable subscription for mm -hmm. newspapers, but it is kind of difficult for. You know, like with a paper, because then you have to pay for the Washington, you know, the New York Times and the Washington Post. But yeah, if they did a bundle, I think that would be a lot more appealing for people that like to read newspapers. And then you could yeah. access all the newspapers, you know, because even every city has their own newspaper. I like, I don't know. What, I live in an area where I can't get a newspaper. You can't get a newspaper. I get some nope. free newspaper from our community, but it's only ads and I always throw it out. Yes, There's I, no I, actual I news in it. It's just... Here's an ad for the local dry cleaner or something like that. Um, Great kindling. So what, in your opinion, what can Cricket do? What kind of good corporate moves can they do to make more money, but also to benefit customers? Is there anything maybe positive they could do that would both be a money maker and a win for everybody? Like, I've been thinking about that too, and I, I haven't come up with anything, but... I think Cricket's done a lot of stuff right, and primarily being their... Uh, supply chain right you can go out mm -hmm. to target walmart amazon whatever and buy cricket supplies and that that makes their product you know valuable to consumers because whenever walmart opens for 24 hours again you can go there at two o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. if your cricket bites the dust if you want because it ain't and just get it. just get another one they're they are to a point where they are becoming commodity based mm -hmm. items and i think that's what cricket could have done had they screwed all this up but I don't know if there's anything left for them, right? They could lower the price on materials, but that's going to hurt them, so they're not going to mm -hmm. do that. They could have an open one that they come out with, but that's going to hurt them. They're not going to do that. Now that they're going public, this is probably all that we're going to see from them. They might issue another, like, this again feels like very much rushed, you know, a very CYA cover your butt. Yeah, this was very like, thing. we are in crisis mode. What the F do oh, we yeah. do? Um, I don't. I I would love to be a fly on the wall at Cricket headquarters this oh, week. That so would be much. so entertaining. Uh. <laughs> I, you know, honestly, I might I might have to walk out because the the amount of ignorance that went into that first post and then it, the second one to me was even worse. And then this, like seriously, we care deeply for every single member of our community and it's your creativity that keeps us motivated you are lying through <laughs> you your don't believe teeth. you don't believe. i don't believe like look i am motivated by makers i am motivated by people doing really cool stuff but you know what else motivates me money and that's what motivates a lot of people you don't buy a cricket because you just want to give it away for free you buy it because you want to make a side hustle with it. You buy it because you want to do cool stuff or you found that it's easier for you to buy your own machine and make whatever you want to make than it is for you to pay somebody else to do it for you. That's what we're seeing in the 3D printing industry. You can get a 3D printer for like 200 bucks. All right, so but I want to I want to give you a chance since you're on this program. Sure. All right, first of all, 
let's give your channel a shout out because it's awesome. Um, what kind of videos do you want to make for 3D Musketeers? Honestly, whatever you guys want to see. All right, see. Let, let Grant know what you like. I really like the Grant Rants videos, so <laughs> I would love to see. And the thing I, I think would kind of resonate is no matter what topic it is, if you're just really entertaining, people will watch it no matter what. Like I commented, like you could rant about the phone book, and that would be funny to me. So I am attempting to find a phone book. Yeah, by the way. I My I phone found book's really thin. <laughs> like yeah, and I was like I like, but that's the thing. Like it doesn't matter what you're talking about. You just are such a fire for everything, and you're so yep. like it's very entertaining. Um, so that's your cat down there. I believe yep, is this Victoria. is this your cat Victoria the cat? So tell people what your business is about and what kind of like if maybe there's somebody out there that needs needs what you what you offer. And so. 3D Musketeers is a product development company. So we help you take your ideas out of your head and put them in your hands because everybody's got that idea that they're afraid that the ghost of Billy Mays is going to be talking about on late night television. And we want to make sure that that doesn't happen. We help you go from art to part. Like I said earlier, we have marketing, branding, 3D design, 2D design, lawyers, which are patent attorneys, trademark, mm -hmm. copyright. We even have people to help you defend all of that in the event that something bad does happen. This is truly full service, art to part product development. And even when it comes down to, all right, we're ready to go after Walmart. We're ready to go get hardcore production. We have production facilities in Bradenton, Florida. So a little bit south of where you are that are making your products in America because we have we have to keep our money here if we want to grow this country and you know as 3d musketeers we want to help you take those ideas and make them real that's what we're all about and you know i can give you some links and things to post but realistically guys check out our channel let me know if there's <laughs> anything you that you want to see we're gonna have some uh grant so an expert versus grant's girlfriend Ooh. not an expert building 3d printers and i'll spoil okay. a little bit for you it's a lot closer than you think uh oh uh, but the video is really really cool it's still got a bunch of editing to go so it might take a bit we're launching a new website soon because we've done a full rebrand of the company the logo is brand new thanks thomas and if you guys want to see that whole process there are episodes on our podcast where we actually rebranded the company live on the podcast <laughs> uh and it, it's it is awesome I am seeing in our company Discord that we are going to do a whole new series called Grant Rants. Yes, Grant uh, Rants, man. So that, thanks for that. That's Jen. gotta happen, Grant Rants. <laughs> I also think um, Grant Crafts, maybe, where you try. I think it would be funny to see you try to like fumble your way through craft projects. You know what I mean? I would like do it. maybe I making. Would do it. You know, you could make something that's a little like out of your wheelhouse. Maybe we should. I feel like we should do that. I but. Yeah, we need, we need to team up because we, and so if you're just joining us, um, I'm with Grant with 3D oh, Musketeers. Thomas. <laughs> Thomas is here. All right. Let's Thomas put up, let's, we'll put that, up that's Thomas. That's our branding guy. Okay. All right. Hello, Thomas. <laughs> so Grant and I are talking about the Cricket news. Cricket has now done a total 180, and now they're saying that the uh, at the free version of Design Space will be unlimited for the Again. For, for, uh, for good, I guess. The so way it I guess be. now the way it should be. Um in Grant and I actually met at a small business workshop. Do you even remember the workshop? Like I don't. I, I think it was about business structures or something like that. I had gone because I was trying to figure out how to grow what I'm doing and I wanted to make sure I was doing it legally so I wouldn't go to jail. Um so that's why I showed up and we got free pens. I think we got free workbooks and um we got free uh business plan books. And I remember the guy, you you know what I remember about you? You knew more than the guy teaching the workshop. Oh, like, no. <laughs> like, cause you kept taught, you kept speaking up and the guy, he was like, they were nice, but they, they weren't that like helpful. Like they kind of gave us some boilerplate information of like how to, like in our county, what you need to do. But like, I would try to ask real specific questions and usually they didn't really know what I was talking about. So that was, you know, but I remember Grant was speaking up a lot and then um, you were sharing a lot of information about how you structured your LLC and in what situations, because everybody thinks that if you have an LLC, it protects you from liability automatically. And I don't think that's necessarily the case, but not. you had, you raised some very good points. And then he, you and I talked afterwards, I started following you on Instagram 
And we, I well, think that was we in, really bad yeah, at marketing. Yeah. So, <laughs> and then I remember at the time talking to you a little about YouTube. I think you were like, who, who the F is, but whatever. You're probably like, well, who is this girl, but whatever. Um, and then, you know, you're like, this girl looks crazy or whatever. But now you're here on YouTube and I happen to find your video because I was just perusing for other cricket videos and you happened to make a cricket video. And I was like, he looks really familiar. I was like, oh, that's the guy from the business workshop. So his hair is a little bit longer. It's a little bit longer. Yeah. And I, you look the same. Like I remember, I do remember you from the workshop, but you're very good on camera. And I do think you should keep doing this because I think the crafting community, especially is really appreciated you putting your voice out there and they loved what you had to say for the most part. Um, for the most part, there were a couple of haters, but you're going to get that on any video. So just, just be ready for that. that. You're okay with that. (laughs) They added a view to that video. I don't care if it's a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Yeah. Interaction is what helps channels grow and you know i am so down for doing like a grant makes where grant makes I, maybe i come over to your shop and you put Ooh. something in front of me and i just and, you're, and you try to figure out yeah it. oh my gosh that yes. would actually yeah we should do that so i live i live about an hour from you um yep. but it's not that bad we should definitely do that and then i think it'd be funny to take a bunch of pictures because my craft room is like pink and stuff so you you looking my sort of like not- scare <laughs> maybe you could be like afraid of this room i don't know so <laughs> I, I i am excited on the prospects of doing things like that because i love putting myself in those situations where i don't know what the hell i'm doing but i'm gonna that find a funny. way to make it out and yeah, yeah i'd love to meet your girlfriend because you said she does cosplay and and she's yes. into crafty and my husband likes 3d printing although funny story he has a 3d printer he's used it like three times we've owned it for like four years he he keeps buying new filament um but i'm gonna say it's not a very used it's not a very he's the type and he watches you have no idea how much time my own husband spends watching welding and 3d printing channels okay Um, welding's pretty cool yeah so he'll spend 800 hours watching a welding video we bought a welder he's used it twice so that's the type of person he is um He'll also spend like $3,000 to catch some fish kayak fishing. Like that's sort of his whole deal. We do. So we do have a 3D printer. I'm sure he would love to talk to you about it because he likes that sort of thing. He also watches those channels where some guy is com- is comparing like the speed of different operating systems. And I'm like, I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know what this is. And then they have like a huge chart of different like graphics cards and the performance rates and all of that like really dorky stuff so yeah, you're welcome to come over and we can craft yes i'd love to get your girlfriend in on it i we, we got to talk about this uh we were originally going to do something weird with my cricket but that's very much pointless now so we're not we're not going to do that uh but plus is it though because it would still we, be a bunch of it fun. would be funny we were just wondering about the lee i was scared about the legality of it to be I honest checked, with it's you. totally legal wait really yep it's oh, private okay. land no one can tell us what to do okay so no one can tell us what can do all right, well, we're going to continue this conversation, but Grant, thank you. I, I'm so glad you're here and that we connected this week through, weirdly, the cricket situation. Um, anything, what do you have to tell? Like, do you feel like, as far as the cricket customer goes, what should we, you know, should we be, like, happy now? Should we be just cautiously optimistic? What do you think, cricket Cautious crafters? Cautious optimism okay. is perfect. I, 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 I don't think I could have said it better myself understand that they already tried this once and you need to understand how you feel about that um and you know i've been told that crickets are not entirely designed to last uh, up to the rigorous Ooh. abuse that i put machines put the- through uh because that's what we do but if you have a broken cricket i would love to do an autopsy on it and figure out why they broke because so, that's, that's kind of cool i have an idea so i think if we put out a call on Facebook Marketplace or something saying, hey, I'm looking to buy like a a, a, an, a broken Cricut, I'm sure somebody has one. I'll put it Wait, on you know Facebook what though? Care. Wait, I have a Cricut expression from 2009. It does work. Do you wanna, do you, I would be happy to sacrifice that to whatever you wanna do. I, so I think doing that? autopsies on working machines, on broken machines Ooh. and understanding how their systems work. Mm. Because if we can identify <laughs> fatal flaws, we can look at fixing them before it becomes a problem. Or maybe we can jerry-rig our own, I don't know, like sure. before. Baking so, soda and super glue go a long way. <laughs> Makes a concrete when you mix baking soda and uh, super glue. 
All right, so we, we're, we've got some plans. Well, Grant, I know you got to jump off to a maker Zoom soon. So thank you so much for being here. Yes, I know we had some technical issues at the beginning. So my, I have this Logitech mouse. It's awesome. But there's this little button that's the back. It's basically, it's like back. So when I accidentally hit it, it just totally exited me out of the software completely. It's an MX Master 2S, right? Yes, it's, uh, it's I think I have the 3. It's the 3, the MX three. Master 3. It's, I would highly recommend it because with Adobe Premiere, you can program the mouse to do different functions with the software. So, Razer so Naga that is cool. if you want a mouse with hmm. lots of buttons on it. I, I'm a minimalist, but I'm still okay. an RGB fanboy, so I have a... I have a uh, Cooler Master MX711. It weighs 60 grams, but uh, I, I love computer peripherals and all that kind of thing too. And yes, you can 3D print shells for that Ooh. mouse. And yes, that is in the plan. Um, nice. I, I like to add 3D printing as part of my everyday life. And if you see me out in public, you'll know what I'm talking about. I won't give it away. You so won't if you're in Tampa, right. you, you'll see me. But uh, I am excited for all the cool things that, that are going to be coming on your channel, Jen. I am so excited. You, you definitely have some subscribers out of the entire team at 3D Musketeers. And right. I, I think someone said they want to see me sew a bag. Yeah. Um, I'll have the girlfriend bring the suture kit because, I, uh, um, yeah, I'm going to hurt myself probably. Maybe, um, so if you have, like, some engineers there, maybe we can, like, you know, you guys come over and we can learn how to learn how to sew. And then, Absolutely. like, I think the title "Engineers Learning How to Sew" would be would I do be entertaining. I have a very old singer. That's okay. Cast iron. It's a cast iron singer. It's got the original wood case on it. I, I bought it at a at an estate sale for way less than it was worth. I'm like, this is a singer, and even I know what it is. I would love to learn how to use it. I do need to make a power cord for it, which I'm going to 3D print. But you're going to 3D. After. All right, three. You 3D print everything, right? You can't right? buy them. You can't God. buy them. That's so true. I'm going to get a regular foot pedal off the internet, make an adapter, and be done with it. Uh, but I would love to bring that thing over and see if we can breathe to life figure out how to make it work. Machine. It feels like one of those that you could uh, sew aluminum together with because it's just so mechanical and old. But I would love to learn how to sew because, you know, as, as it comes as a guy, in handy. I go through yeah. pants every yeah. now and then, you know. You, you'll rip a, rip a pocket or I need to hem something. I don't know what I'm doing. And the you know what though? I I feel thing. like I feel like you would enjoy it. Like if you're nerdy about anything, you can find a way to like be like this is cool. So maybe there's stuff you could make for the shop or you know, as gifts. I don't know. I mean, you could make uh, your girlfriend's you know dress or something like that. She she might be jazzed about that. We have been talking about, and I think yeah, Justin Levy put it in the chat because Justin's one of the people that works with us. Uh, the parachute from the Mars rover that was actually a hidden message someone made a dress of that i said you know what i would wear that i would wear that dress i actually have good legs so <laughs> that's like the one part of me that's go. still in good shape i'd rock it you know Screw what gender normality yeah but harry's let's do some cool stuff yeah you could recreate the harry styles photo shoot maybe and do something something vogue-ish <laughs> that would be cool I'm, well, I'm, I'm up for doing fun stuff. I, I, you know, I'm literally, I am growing out my hair because of uh, 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 something that's going on in my life. And we're going to start, eventually when it gets long enough to donate, we're going to do a whole fundraiser for someone to come and shave my head as a, as a means of donating money to the Make-A-Wish. you got to do that live. I think you should do it live. Oh, totally. Do live and now stream? that I've said it on your channel, now I can't no, back no, out you, of it. Yeah, you have to do it now. <laughs> so, yes, ch guys, check out Grant's channel. It's Let me pull that up again. It is... 3D Musketeers, and he's making some really cool videos all about the make. It's not just about 3D printing. It's about the maker community. And he also yep. gives a lot of business insights. So if you are a business owner or an entrepreneur, it's really it might be really helpful for you uh, to get some insight from someone that's been in business for quite a while here in the Tampa Bay area. So Grant, I will let you go. But thank you so much for being here. And I will, and, But this is not your last time on the channel. That is for sure. Oh, no, I am excited for all back. the crazy awesome that we are about to make. <laughs> Honestly, I, this was a pleasure. Jen, thank you so much for this. And I guess I have to do my sign off, right? The sign off that I do on, yeah. on every video. Yes, definitely do that. Don't forget to call your loved ones because it's the <laughs> pandemic and you probably haven't called them enough. Keep making awesome. I will see you all in the next one. Take care. <laughs> all right. Bye, Grant. <laughs> bye. All right. So Grant is taking off. Okay. So I also want to ask um, Ken's creation. You have been really active in the comment section. 
Uh, Ken, if you have an, a webcam ready, would you like to come on the channel and chat with me? I've been watching your live streams and I think you've got some interesting things to say. So Ken, if you're out there and you're still with me, uh, let me know because I would, I would definitely love to bring you on the live stream now so we can chat a little bit about what's been going on with Cricut, especially since you have some experience as a Cricut product expert. So Ken's creation, Earth to Ken, let me know. All right, let's read some comments, but I really appreciate Grant coming on. This was like a super last minute thing. And again, I apologize for the uh, technical issues at the beginning. I was not expecting this. This whole Cricut, all of the updates this week, just like have made the week super crazy. I normally upload about once a week. This is now my third like thing I'm doing on the channel this week. And then I have another video that is also Cricut related coming out on Sunday. So look forward to that. That has to do with the SEC filing. But I really appreciate Grant coming on. He was uh, super cool and a really nice guy. All right, let me try to... Okay, I think Grant is still here. All right. Well, it's, it gives you the option to, like, kick a guest out. But, like, that seems so mean. All right, Grant, you're one of my new faves. Yeah, he's so he's so um, engaging on the channel. And... And again, I met him like years ago at this business workshop and I remember him being very, he had a, he has a very big personality and I think it's like perfect for YouTube. So I think that'd be cool. All right, we got Danielle, please do an IPO watch next week. Yeah, I gotta look up to see when like their stock, maybe we can do a live stream when the stock goes live just to follow like the price. I don't know, like this is getting a little, is this too much cricket for the sewing report? I, I feel like it's like very overkill. Okay, so Ken... All right, I'm happy. Okay, so Ken, I'll tell you what, Ken, email me at sewingreport at gmail.com and I'm going to send you a link to the stream so you can jump on with me because I've been watching your stuff this week and I think uh, you've had a lot of uh, very interesting things to say and you've been spilling the tea. So I would love to have you on. Um, so email me, just just Ken, um, please guys, just uh, only can sewing report at gmail.com and I will email you a link to jump on the stream with me if you if you if you would like to uh, join me here uh, and I really appreciate Ken and I've gotten some comments from other like I guess the big crafting youtubers I'm kind of a small channel but this has been really it's it's been such a weird week and uh, this whole I I got the cricket announcement when I was sitting in line at the drive-thru at Hardee's I actually did get to eat today, so that was good because the last live stream I did, I was so out of it. I don't even know what I was saying. I don't even know what I was saying because I was so tired and I had not eaten anything all day. I did get the roast out of the oven around uh, midnight and then I ended up eating, no, it was maybe 12.30. I ended up actually eating at 1.30 in the morning. That was the only time I ate. So uh, the roast turned out great and my husband made some potatoes to go with it. All right. All right. Can you guys hear me? All right. I think, I think the audio is okay. Let me try to check. All right. Uh, hold on one sec. I think it's good. All right. So let me know if you can't hear me. Let me know if you can hear me. Let me know. I think I'm okay though. All right. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, cool. Sorry. This microphone the cord comes out pretty easily. Okay, Ken is here. All right, so we're going to send Ken a link to the stream because I'm curious to talk to Ken about his experience working with Cricut because I'm just curious. I've gotten definitely a sense of what they're like just from emailing with them, but I'm really interested to hear from someone who is like more on the inside for sure. So hopefully Ken will be joining us soon, but thanks guys for joining me. This has been... I, I've done two live streams in a week. I did not think I was going to do that. This announcement, so yeah, I was sitting in the drive through at a Hardee's and I got an email from the Cricket PR person just saying, here's the newest statement. Let us know when you're going to be uh, updating your information. Basically, I, I think they did not want the original videos out there. Even the live stream I did the other night, I don't think it was as positive as they would have wanted because I said Cricket sort of uh, backs down on the announcement. Uh, I don't think they want these videos out there, especially like so many videos criticizing the policy change. So, you know, there's that. Uh, so I rushed home. I was originally going to come home and make strawberry shortcake, but I'm clearly not doing that.
because I'm here. I had to throw on some makeup so I don't scare you guys because I'm dealing with some like weird acne this week. Uh, and that's uh, that's what's going on. All right, let's read some more comments. All right, Cynthia says, I'm beginning my super small business and I'm happy to have found you, Jen and Grid, uh, Thomas and Ken's Creations. All right, thank you, Cindy. Yeah, Grant is a really cool guy, and I'm really uh, excited because we live in the same area. So hopefully we can be doing something at some point uh, to do a collaboration. So doing some crafting, something like that. But yeah, I don't, you know, people were interested to get my take on it. And I want to express that I, I don't hate cricket at all. I'm trying to present this information from more of a neutral standpoint is neutral... And I, as a customer, I like, my, you know, I like my Cricut. I like the, the access uh, software. Like, I'm not unhappy with it. I, but I was concerned and I wanted to support all of the people that were affected by the change who use the free version. And even though that's not me, um, as Grant was saying, when a corporation makes a change like that, usually that's not the end. Usually there's more. So if they, maybe they were raise the price of the subscription or whatnot. So... You know, I just really wanted to make sure that I was backing up the larger community that was that was uh, going to be affected. And you know, and I I don't want I I for if anyone in Cricket Corporate happens to be watching this, I am I'm not your enemy. I don't I don't dislike your company, but I do have an obligation to to you guys, the viewers, uh, to call it like I see it and report in a is an objective of a manner as i as i can get um so cricket i am not your enemy but i'm also not your cheerleader so i think that's what i i think cricket probably does not like is the fact that i'm out here talking about cricket but i am not um i'm not one of their influencers so i don't have a business relationship from them and from the impression i get cricket does not like situations where they cannot control and because I'm not someone that's within their control, they probably are not really a fan. So I'm okay with that. I understand that that means I'm probably not going to, you know, they're probably not going to be calling me on the phone or anything like that. But, you know, and I'm hoping, I really hope this is the last update because I really don't, I really don't want to do that many more cricket videos, to be honest with you, because I'm, I'm sort of getting over this thing. All right, we're going to try to bring Ken on. Ken! Can you hear me? All right, let me try to unmute your mic. Okay. Wait, let's, let's see here. All right. Oh, um, Ken, I think... Okay, you're... Are you... I think you're unmuted. Ken's Creations. Yes. Welcome. Hello. This is, so this is sort of a random collaboration video, it too. It is. Uh, thank you for being on here. I And I really appreciate you watching because uh, I've seen some of your comments. And I watched a couple of your live streams. Um, so we have to talk about this because I'm curious... You used to work for Cricket, right, as a product expert. Yeah, I didn't necessarily work for Cricket. Uh, Cricket has a program where they have experts that they reach out to. And um, in 2014, right when the Cricket Explore came out, I did a video comparing it to the Silhouette Cameo. And I just happened to start loving doing machine reviews. And so I did... I was with a product expert with them. I didn't get paid, but we did get affiliate money. We got early access to machines and features and benefits. And we got to represent our community and saying, here's the things we want. So um, I was brought on very early on when, shockingly, when Cricket actually was coming off the heels of the Make the Cut uh, lawsuit mm. and the failure of the Cricket Imagine and stuff. So. That's what shocked me about this move is they've done a really good job in the past five years on making their brand strong again. Mm -hmm. And the community really does adore cricket. And so just this whole thing was completely out of left field for me. So it, obviously the vibe I get from watching your live streams is that you do really like the products. Um, would you say that you might not be that maybe your your issue is more with like the corporate management at Cricket. Is that would that be fair to say? I I think my biggest issue is over the past four years, I have promoted these machines and I built my channel on unbiased reviews. So I wanted to make sure 
when we reviewed the silhouette and the cricket and the brother and did all of the you know same tests that i came from a point of this is what i honestly think of the machine some people can go out and buy a machine today others will have to save months and months and months and when they're new to a makerspace they don't know the difference between the maker and the explore air and there's so many options so for me uh i approach it in a way of i've referred a ton of these machines i am an affiliate for them i have a in my opinion kind of a responsibility to tell people hey in my reviews one of the things i always said is the software is free and it's unlimited and you can create all you want and in private conversations people would say hey you know i own a store i'm going to be making my designs in you know inkscape or adobe illustrator can i bring that in and i would always say absolutely it is you know you can bring as many images as you want um so for me it was more about do you guys see what is happening and then even taking a step further back of saying it a lot of people approached it saying well they need the extra money for cloud storage and it's like mm -hmm. well go read their ipo you know it, yeah. it, and, they and definitely don't the, need it the subscription is the biggest the has the biggest margin of all of their products so that's the big money maker um so can you explain uh, you've you've gone into this on your own channel what led you to break ties with cricket uh with your business relationship what happened with that so um they actually broke the ties with me um so as a cricket product expert they really want someone that lives breathes and mm -hmm. defends cricket okay. and my entire brand has been about bringing other elements of, you know, uh, crafting. And that's why I actually was really excited about the Cricut Maker is this was a machine that spoke to um, seamstress. It was a machine that eventually was going to speak to model, uh, you know, wood cutting. So uh, I was really excited. But as I started to also focus on other machines and companies, uh, it was made very clear to me that a product expert should not be promoting other brands. Mm -hmm. And essentially, I didn't back down from that. Okay. And so I, it, it was in their decision to let me go as a product expert. I was still in good uh, uh, relationship with them. And I still stand by the product. I stand by the machine. I think the Cricut Maker is the best machine on the market. And for the right person, the software, if you're brand new, it's really- Yeah, like for people really... like me, yeah, for people like me, it actually worked out pretty well because I don't design my own SVGs at all and I'm not a designer. Um, so it look, it seems like the Cricut, you wanted the freedom to also be able to talk about other machines and Cricut did not want that. They only wanted you to talk about Cricut products. Yeah, okay. I think the thing is, is, is they didn't, they didn't mind me talking about other machines as long mm -hmm. as Cricut came out on top in Got the it. reviews. Okay, so if you did a comparison, and, the Cricut always had to be the one that you liked the best. Yeah. That's interesting and, to hear. Yeah, um, and, and it was for me, it was, um, it came down to, I always told people, hey, if you are looking for the best machine, you know, the Cricut is the best machine. Software though, it's hard to beat Silhouette Studio. Mm -hmm. So if you go back and look at all of our reviews and where we compare machines, mm -hmm. we never changed our tone, but I think they wanted it to be more where the community was built around the Cricut influencer that lives, breathes, loves Cricut inside and out. Now, have you ever like gone to Cricut headquarters? Have you ever like attended a, like an event? What's it, what's it like there? It's, you know, it's amazing. I, I, I love going to the Cricut. I was actually at the Cricut Maker event when they launched it and they launched the Cricut Maker and the Easy Press and the Bright Pad all at the same time. And the one thing I will say, and, and I've said this in all my lives up to this point, I actually respect Ashish very highly. He has done mm -hmm. an amazing job turning around the company and if you can actually go to an event where he's speaking it is very much so the feel of an apple presentation do you, do you, know? you really think i'll be get invited to one of those events now <laughs> i you know what the interesting thing is is i honestly think um 
I watched your, of course, your uh, video. Your video was in a lot of uh, broadcasts across the nation in different news articles. And I think you- Do you think they saw it? I, I, I think they saw it. I think it. they did. Pretty, they saw all I don't know. it. I mean, okay. but I think that's a good thing. It's a good thing because um, the community, I feel anyone that, whether they have a platform of 10 people or a thousand, just getting the word out and letting people know both sides of the story. And I thought your first video was very, very good in the fact of here's my journey. Here's where, you know, I come into the cricket story. I'm not someone that is a cricket fan going all the way back, yeah. but this just doesn't seem right. It doesn't seem yeah. kosher. Um, and so I, their events are amazing. I've been to their headquarters. It is very, um, it's very green. They have crickets everywhere and, you know, they have their customer service department there and stuff. So for me, uh, it's it's been amazing to see this company go from where it was in 2014 till now. And that's, I'm going to be honest, that's why I stumbled on this. I really did because I was like, I, I don't understand why they did this until the IPO part came in. So... Do you just from your just from your knowledge of the cricket team, um, what do you what do you think their impression is on like me making videos like the ones I've been making? Like, do you think do you think they're like, oh, my gosh, this girl is causing us some trouble? What do you I actually don't. I think okay. I think they are um, they they're a company that needs to make money. And let's be honest, regardless mm -hmm. if it's bad or good, we we've been how many influencers, how many people have been talking about cricket there have been quite since a few. Friday? And um, I feel like, yes, it drew attention to uh, this policy, but it also kind of drew attention to the other products. If you go to their Facebook page, mm -hmm. they are currently launching, you know, their mug press. They are launching this new material. So, you know, they're, in my opinion, this is still getting the name out there mm -hmm. to a mainstream audience that still may not know what a cricket is. They may say, I have no idea what this, it, it's a, a bug, what does it do? So I kind of feel like in a way, this exposure really, yes, it's kind of hurt them, but they already did that. They put that in the letter, other people saw it. It did though, put a highlight on them. And, and just like you said, people are, that aren't even crafters were talking about it. They're like, yeah, what's going on? And that's true to some extent, any publicity is good publicity to, to, you know, like, I know people are like, you know, yes, this, this type of press is very bad, but the more you get your brand name out to some degree that does weirdly help you. And, you know, we, we've seen that with politics. We've seen that with uh, other high profile figures, you know, who these people are. So yeah, it's kind of, I also think it, 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 a lot of people who have been on the fence of a cricket, the thing that draws people to the cricket is it's easy to use. And if there's one thing I've heard every influencer, or every person talking about is, I love the cricket, but I love the fact that the software is so easy to use. So mm -hmm. even though some people are hearing that 20 image uploads, I had a lot of people reaching out to me after my videos still saying, I think I still want to go with Cricket because it sounds like it's way easier to use than other software. What's your thoughts on this? So I, I don't think anyone's videos made this situation any worse. I just think it took a lot of people saying, hey, this just, I, even this you just said, doesn't, yeah. you even said, it, it's not that I disagree with their decision. I get they're a business. It's the way they communicated it and tried to launch it and wrap well, it up in a bow. Let's talk about the cricket influencers because I feel like some of these cricket sponsored people did take some heat for the company while they kind of didn't respond for a few days. Yeah. I gotta say, I feel I feel some empathy for these people because that's that's hard, especially when you don't have when they didn't come out with a statement from like Friday to Monday, and then these people are taking the heat. Uh, in their comment sections and whatnot. Um, I know some mm -hmm. people are criticizing them, but I also see where, again, they're probably contractually obligated to it, not really talk, you know, some crap about cricket. And I get that. Um, yeah. So I do want everyone out there watching to know that, uh, again, I know some of you might be a little frustrated with these people for maybe not saying anything, but I think there's reasons why they didn't. Um, I do think there... 
I, I do kind of fault cricket leadership to some extent for letting these people take that heat alone. Um, I don't think that was very cool. And they should have backed. Yeah. I think they should have put out something sooner or tried to do damage control before the weekend was Absolutely. over. Absolutely. So that these people did not have to take all this heat by themselves. I think that had to have been really, like, freaky for them. Um, yeah. And, you know, just with the whole cancel culture, like, when it's happening to somebody, it's very, it's very scary in the moment. So yeah. um, I don't. You know, I don't um, I, I don't really want to um, put out any sort of opinion that I think that's good or bad, but just that I see I see where they're coming from. I do. I feel I feel it, believe me, I a lot of these influencers and uh, experts I'm still personal friends with. I have personal relationships. I'm telling you right now, this was not an easy place to put all those people in yeah. not just the influencers and the product experts but even people that have subscription plans that release svgs every month mm -hmm. they have to now re like you look at auntie tay and she has the subscription plan where she's going to release these files and now this is kind of thrown yeah. and it's a blind sight and i really think a lot of the experts and influencers let me tell you when i was one we did, we didn't get advanced knowledge of this is the change here's what's going to happen here's what's to do sometimes it's just changes and you're like what do i do because i built a business or a community around this brand and it's it's in a hard position you know so i i felt really bad for him because i felt like a lot of them were they were doing damage control and they were trying to justify why and that shouldn't sense. that shouldn't have been their responsibility i'm just going to say that that no. should not have been that is on the pr team with cricket cricket pr i will call you out on that i thought that was very unfair cricket does outsource their pr to an external company i felt they did not handle that very well and that they should have i know look guys i know we don't like working on the weekends who does but for them to leave those people hanging out to dry I thought it was pretty like crappy and waiting until Monday was, or what was it Tuesday? I think even, Yeah. I mean, that's a long time. They did the Friday news dump, which all of these companies do when they got bad news. And, uh, it was just, yeah, it was kind did of, you watch it was the still Friday, a disaster. Did you watch the live on I, cricket? We so cricket did a live they, stream. So they did a live stream on Friday no. to say all of these amazing features are coming and my heart broke for Anna Rose. She was the one presenting it. Because Did she talk about the upload limit at that point? It was very brief. It was mostly, let's okay. focus on the offset and stuff. Yeah. But in the comments, I mean, they just started going crazy. And if you go to that post now, it's, it's to the point where I even feel Cricket employees probably didn't have a say in this. This was probably yeah, no, definitely not very... the role. and not that girl that's doing the live stream. She had no, I know she had nothing to do with that decision. Yeah, and that's just that's just crazy. So that's where I felt the the thing is is it was a horrible position to be in, and I honestly feel a lot of people were the reason I love the fact that you came out with a video and we saw all the videos that we didn't normally see. It wasn't a silhouette versus cricket fan base it was very much so this just feels weird how it's packaged and delivered believe me i before i did my video i was like this could be career killing for me as well like i know that i might say something that upsets a group of people or uh cricket as a company but at the end of the day i will do that for the consumer that doesn't have that voice yeah yeah, because I think, do you think if we had not made all of these videos, do you think they would have reversed the decision? Um, I, I would, I would like to say yes, they would. Um, the one thing I didn't like about the second statement is mm -hmm. they said they value community and they value the importance of their consumer and hearing feedback. To me, there was no way someone in an office was like, this is going to be a great idea and it's not going to be an issue. The average person doesn't upload 20 images. It, it didn't matter at that point. I think it mattered the fact that you sold something and it came with a package that said this and now you're changing it. And I think a lot of people just said, I, it just felt wrong. I, I think why the... The good thing about the videos is I think it escalated it. This isn't something that was long and drawn out. And mm -hmm. it could have, in my opinion, been a way worse fallout. But I think because of the videos and people talking about it, 
it, it made them move faster to fix it, not once, but twice. Yeah, and I think um, when I had had some emails with them and they just kept, they would send me like the blanket statement and then they would say like, so are you going to put up a follow-up video? Like they did not, I don't think they wanted that original video just floating around uh, because it was not, you know, it was not great for them. Um, so they just kept asking me and even today they're like, so let us know if you're going to do some follow-ups, like make sure, and I, I've been trying to update like even the old videos I've been inserting, even though I can't change the video, I've been inserting the new links and putting in the new information. So even if someone finds the old video, they still can hopefully see that there's been a change. Uh, Cause that's the thing, uh, you know, and I don't know if, I know we don't know each, we don't know each other at all. Like this is the first time we've ever really like no. talked. <laughs> um, but I, I'm an ex TV news producer. So that's kind of why I, I sort of ended up doing these style of videos. And I was like, why am I, you know, this is not my usual thing, but it just happens to be something that I can do, I guess. So I, I ended up doing it. Um, but I don't, I don't think Cricket is used to dealing with people in this space like me because I'm just coming at it from a different angle than I think they're used to. Um, cause I'm not, you know, I'm not asking them softball stuff or just saying, Hey, I just want to, you know, do a tutorial. I'm like, I was like, look, customers have these questions. Would you be willing to answer them? They have turned me down three times to being on the channel. So I don't think they're going to, I don't think they're going to um, take me up on that, but I have been offering just out of fairness. But I even told them in my original email, look, I, this will not be a hit piece nor a puff piece. Like this is not going to be a cricket love fest, everything, you know, we love cricket. But I also said, I'm not going to be, you know, unfair either. So this is going to be pretty like a neutral. I wanted yeah. them to to know that it was going to be like pretty neutral territory and that I, I'm definitely very fair, um, especially if they would come on. I would like I respect when people who have kind of a controversy, I do respect when, you know, they have the gall to go on a show or to do something like that because they're kind of facing it head on. Um, as an ex media member, I really hate when companies try to deflect or like ignore things until they go away. Um, uh, mm -hmm. media outlets hate hate that because it just looks like they're running away from the problem instead of facing it head on um yeah so that's been it's been kind of interesting dealing with them behind the scenes um but yeah i kind of get the vibe they i think they want me to go away like i don't i don't think they want these videos anymore so i don't know that's just sort of the the first impression that i've i've gotten and i i don't deal with this company at all um i don't and i don't do what i've done a few cricket videos but I'm obviously not like an influencer mm -hmm. and I don't, I don't think I'm probably, I don't think they're going to sure. like call me. I don't think they're going to call me and, you know, try to, to partner up or anything like that, but I'm, that's fine. Like I'm not, I'm not looking for that, but I really appreciate. Okay. I think we, all right, Ken, are you here? All right. I think, all right. We'll wait for Ken to regroup. Yeah, a I'm still bit. here. Okay. Can you see me? All right. Yes, you are. Your, your signal's a little spotty, but we can hear you. But I really appreciate you coming on because uh, I've been following you. And okay. I found some new channels this week, too, because I don't normally watch some of these channels. Um, so I found your channel. I found Auntie Tay. I've been kind of watching some others. Anyone that did a cricket mm -hmm. video, I kind of tried to watch it just to see what you had to say, especially since you did have a relationship with Cricket. So obviously you have some, you have some insight into the company that I don't. So I, I'm so grateful that you are, you're here with me. All right, sorry, is this your house? All right, we get a house, a bonus house tour. This is awesome. It is, I'm trying to get a spot where you don't break out. <laughs> is this where the magic happens? I had to go get my wife. All right, oh, oh you, my so gosh, you've spot. got, Oh, this you, is our studio, okay, that, yes. That is the studio. Yeah. And is that, um, are you like me where it's like a room in your house? Yeah. All right. So what is, so it's K and S. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's okay. just a room that you convert. Yeah. It's like, so my, my craft room is actually my living room so that we don't have a living room. I don't have any, I don't really entertain oh. at all. So um, I'm living the recluse life. So that's, so what that's was it that, what, why did you buy a cricket maker? What was um, it I, that initially, you know, I had, a, so my, I, I had seen the Cricut Maker come out like two years ago. I'm one of those people though, when I'm buying something, I take like two years to buy something. I research a little bit and then I don't buy it right away. I'm always the person or I'll look for it on sale. It'll take me a long time to buy anything. Yeah. So I ended up buying it. Um, I had a Cricut Expression from 2009 that I got off an infomercial. Um, and the reason I was hesitant about buying the Maker was because I barely used the Expression. So my husband was like, well, you don't use it a lot. So why are you buying another one? Um, 
I guess the thing that led me to the maker was the fact that um, the, the was the fact that it wasn't cartridge based that you could do designs that were outside just the machine. Um, and it seemed easier. And I'll be honest, I liked the way I liked the aesthetics of it. Um, and I think if anything, this week has shown us like I didn't think about the software at all. But obviously the software is a big deal. So I think that's something that a lot of customers overlooked that now maybe you all out there are now hyper aware of the fact that whether the software is free or not actually matters. All right. All right. Ken's Creations, we love your channel too. All right. We'll read some comments. And this is, and I thought this is such like, um, this is such like a Jerry rigged live stream. It was very last minute and it's also like starting to storm where I live. So we'll see how long this whole thing lasts. But for everyone watching, I really appreciate everybody. Um, if you are enjoying what you're seeing, make sure to like the video, leave a comment. I, I know you guys are chatting right now. If you're watching the replay, leave a comment. And it really helps too to watch most of the video. Obviously, this one's super long. So I totally get if you don't want to watch all like two hours or whatever we're doing. Uh, but this has been really fun. Let me, and if you're just joining and you're kind of here late, I will put up the CEO statement from uh, Cricket CEO Ashish Aurora. So we'll we'll do that while we're waiting for Ken. So if you're just joining or you're late to the game, we got a new update from Cricket that they have basically reversed the entire decision and now they are, uh, we're back where we started. So before you knew all of this, that's where we are now. It's just, we've had a whole lot of drama in between. So they've announced that uh, we announced an intention to limit the number of personal images and patterns that members can upload to Design Space without a Cricut Access membership. We updated this plan on March 16th and shared that we intended to study the matter further. My team has spent the week listening, learning, and taking in a lot of feedback. Not every decision we make is perfect, but we take every opportunity to learn and get better. So we've made the decision to reverse our previously shared plans. Right now, every member can upload an unlimited number of images and patterns to Design Space for free, and we have no intention to change this policy. This is true whether you're a current Cricket member or are thinking about joining the Cricket family before or after December 31st of 2021. We care deeply about every single member of our community, and it's your creativity that keeps us motivated, excited, and passionate every day about what we're building here at Cricket. Thank you for your candor and your commitment to our company and community. We appreciate you. Uh, Sheesh Aurora Cricket CEO. So what do you guys think? Uh, I mean, we're really at back at square one, which is sort of strange, but I guess that's where we are. But uh, let, let me know what you think. Are, is this cool with you? Do you feel like this is a good resolution? All right, I think we got Ken back. All right, we're back in the Ken zone. Sorry about that. You. No worries. No worries. This, you know what? This is this is live 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 broadcasting, baby. This is where this is where it's at. Um, I've done a lot of really uh, bad newscasts in my <laughs> lifetime. Uh, this is nothing, man. Like this is nothing. I've had some really uh, bad day. like this is a walk in the park for me because um, I'm not dealing with like death and destruction. So um, I mean, oh, we're yeah. just talking about crafting. I mean, that's not it's not that you know it's not that. Uh, uh, that it's not that bad so you know for all well, of you guys thing, who are like this is crazy i mean this is crazy but you know it could be it could be it could be a lot worse so the the one thing i i do want to thank you for though is i think a lot of people the first thing they're going to do when a something happens like this a change a policy is they're going to go to the internet they're going to go to google or they're going to go to youtube and look for videos, and look for for videos. yeah and um i appreciated that because coming from the crafting world, some people could say, oh, well, you mm -hmm. you might be looking at this through fog, you know, because you were once partnership with them mm -hmm. and stuff. So to have yours and the other videos, I think just inspired a lot of people. And I thought it was, I think it's amazing. And and so I thank you for it. Oh, you're so, well, I'm here for you guys. And, um, and I knew, you know, from the get go, I knew a lot of these cricket people there they were not going to be able to speak out so um mm -hmm. I, I can make these videos i'm in the position to i don't really care if i piss off cricket because whatever um you know and it is what it is but um that's the thing though do you guys want me to make more videos? like this has been such a dramatic week like i usually am like so chill but now every time something breaks i'm like i have to do another live stream and update because that's the thing when you're in the news business um 
you have to you have a responsibility to provide yep. the most up to date information. That is uh, something I take very seriously, and I've really tried my best to update update in a pretty timely manner when stuff happens. So that my old video, you know, imagine if I hadn't done the two live streams, you guys would still think we were at the original policy. Yeah. So it is very important. And I guess one thing I can bring to this space is the news gathering ability. That is something you kind of learn from working in media. Mm -hmm. So I guess I, I've got that. I, I, you know, I'm good at cyber stalking, which is sort of creepy, but a little, it's like half creepy, half useful, I guess. I don't know. But I'm so glad we at least met through all this. Um, yeah. And you, now when we had Grant on a little bit ago, so have you seen Grant's videos on 3D Musketeers? I, what I, did, I want to know, what did you think? What did I you think? thought they were hilarious. <laughs> yeah, he's I really thought, funny. <laughs> I thought, um, you know, like he brought this kind of humor to it where yeah. it's like, we're not looking to end world hunger or anything, but it basically was bringing a very third party perspective, yeah. which I loved there. Like he said, I had no skin in the game. It doesn't matter one way or the other. Um, but I do appreciate because I was actually talking to Tania earlier today, Auntie Tay, and, mm -hmm. and she was like, did you see they did another update? And she said the same thing. She goes, I have to go do another video because you're right. You yeah. want to make sure that if we're going to put this video out there, if they do make updates and changes, yeah. we're of course going to let the audience know that and and let them know what this means. Um, so I loved his videos. I think they're hilarious. They were the part where he's like, "That's not how this works. That's not how any of this works." I about died. Like he just has. He really has the knack for. Um, that type of video, like the ranty, like I'm not that angry. Like I, and I was even watching the live stream the other night and I was like, wow, I seem so like monotone. Like I felt like I seemed very low energy, although I was ridiculously tired. So that might've had something to do with it. Um, but he just really has like the fire. And I think the ability to, to really talk very passionately about these, uh, mm -hmm. about these videos and yeah, I did. We were at the same small business workshop in 2018. And I remember him from the workshop. Yeah. Because um, he and just knew, he knew more than the dude like teaching the workshop. That's you know? funny. That was a little well, sad. It is, it is interesting because when the news broke, I, at first I didn't want to, you know, do a video, but the more I sat on it, like you couldn't escape it. And I grant you on TikTok, I follow crafty videos. Mm -hmm. The people were you know, they were saying things, they were doing, I mean, it was a big thing. And not one person said, this is about the cost. Not one person I talked to was like, this is about the $10. It wasn't about that. It yeah. was the way it was communicated in the transparency. No, and for absolutely. me, that's what it came down to and stuff. So um, I think it's great. Like it feels like a win today, but it still feels like it should have never been yeah, this was so unnecessary. With. They lost. I feel like Cricket did lose a significant amount of goodwill for no for no reason. Like this mm -hmm. did not. This was so silly. Like we shouldn't have had to do these videos at all. Like this was so silly. Um, yeah, and this does remind me of a lot of situations of like covering different stories where, you know, yeah, like they 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 have like a PR nightmare and then they have they end up like really having to reverse course. But it's like the damage is already done. So do you yeah. feel, um, just from talking to your community, um, do they still have a lot of good faith in this company? Are they like a bit skeptical? Like, what do you, what do you I, feel like the vibe is at this? A point? lot of the people in the community basically said they, they're happy. They're very happy mm -hmm. with the the results, um, and they're happy that Cricket took action and basically said, "We hear you." you know, um, and we're going to make these changes. The big mistake, and it's still to me, is just like, oh, what made it no. worse is the, the the second letter. I mean, it was like, yeah. we're going to kind of give it ambiguity. to you. And there was so much ambiguity. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then everyone are, had questions about the machine or the account. And am I connected? Do I need to connect myself yeah. to the machine? Like, do you need my social blood type? Like, what do you need yeah. to not <laughs> get charged? And, and that's how it felt to me was, that my second video was a little bit more um, passionate because it was like, really, either stick to your guns and say yeah. we're not budging or do the right thing from the beginning. Yeah, don't, and so, what is it, Breaking Bad, no half measures, man, no half measures. Yeah. Either go big or go home. This, yeah, was, such a, so. this was such a disaster. You know what, though, the, the original title of my video actually still stands. Cricket Design Space update is a disaster or whatever. Like that's, it's still true. It was a total disaster. Like they, 
I, they just didn't handle this whole situation very well. And what I think, what pissed me off too as a customer was the fact that they like slid it in in that like blog update. <laughs> And I was like, that's, you're burying the lead there. That is like the thing that matters. And I feel like they tried to hide it in all of the other updates. And when well, they're yep. like, yeah, we're going to have more videos. I'm like, I don't, I don't give a shit about that. Like, I'm like, whatever. Like, that's just not, you know, well, it's, I, that was just so silly. And I, you know, I don't know some of the stuff on their website too. I do cricket. If you're watching, please change the legal play page and take that married couple off of it. It's just weird. Like every time I look at it, I just feel <laughs> You know what, like, I, I don't, I know they're trying to be, like, funny or something, but I just, um, it, you know, it's, it's legal mumbo jumbo. We do not need, yep. we do not need you to be cute. Like, this is, <laughs> I feel like this is so cringe. Every time I go to the page, I'm just like, this is, please stop. Like, this is one of those I, matters where this does not work. <laughs> I do think this is the big first issue we've seen though cricket has had to deal with their younger audience because to be honest you know up till about two three years ago it was a uh a grandfathered or audience that went way back mm -hmm. and in the last year you can see it on our videos google trends you can see how much steam they picked up especially during covid um but the thing that made that interesting to me is when this change happened the younger audience was, they were ready to go pounce. And they went to TikTok, they went to Facebook, they went to Reddit. I remember someone saying like- I didn't even see, see the it? TikTok stuff, man. Yeah, I didn't and then see... everyone's like Reddit and is like, oh my gosh, you know, and no one holds back in Reddit. But- yeah, I found it, I found out from Reddit. That was like the first place I started seeing and people were so, I think the one post, this lady, I, I or I don't know if it was a lady, they the poster wrote in all caps, F cricket something something and i'm like wow they are very mad like the people were not happy like when you start seeing those types of posts it's it's not good it's just not yeah, good it's not <laughs> do you and think do you think there's somebody low level at cricket who's who has to like go through reddit and look for stuff like that I, is there somebody I, there I personally, and I don't know this to be because I'm not affiliated with yeah, it anymore. Yeah, we're just speculating, but guys. We're just I, speculating. I'm sure what happened is, like you said, they dumped it on Friday, and you had all yeah. these influencers I and know. experts that probably got slammed hard. And so I bet you they were emailing whoever their person yeah. was at Cricket saying, what like, are we gonna going to do? On? What's the communication you want us to you know, say? Is there a yeah. script? How Should do we... I respond to these people? Because they're I mean, angry. Well, not only that, but like halfway through, you have people that are like, we're doing a class action lawsuit. We're going to, oh, yes. you know. There were a lot of those. And I did, I don't think that would, I don't think that would work, to be honest with you. I'm sorry, guys, if you were considering the lawsuit, but I just, I, I didn't see that. Yes. I, I, from my perspective, I didn't see that going anywhere, but they were very passionate about it. So, you know, people are going to do and what they're going to do. And that's why I think, well, and I think that's kind of why the, the change did happen on Monday and Tuesday, of course, because you had all of these influencers. Yeah. I know like Leah Griffith and a lot of big names were posting like, this isn't creativity for freedom and, and stuff. I, I reached out to my, you know, people I know at Silhouette and I was like, what are you guys thinking? And there was a little bit of a graphic that they put up about 20 free designs. And I was like, well played, but yeah. it, it, it all came down to leaving it on Friday so people could just sit. And the part that really shocked me is they weren't responding to comments. Yeah. on their post and they were vicious they were horrible comments and i i, I just felt bad for these influencers that had to deal with it yeah talk about the um i don't know if you go to the subreddit hobby drama where people report on different <laughs> controversies happening in like really random niches i feel like this would be a good fit for hobby drama um this whole thing has been i don't know like and i was telling everybody before you are I think well before you, like I had plans today to make strawberry shortcake that's what I was gonna do tonight and uh that that did not happen uh, I also totally spaced on a phone call with my accountant because I was like <laughs> busy getting ready for this and I was like I'm so sorry I like totally forgot because I was trying to not look scary so I could jump yeah. on here um but this has just been like would you like are you just kind of in disbelief that all of this has occurred so yes, I, I was, I was really in disbelief. Like I think my audience kind of was waiting for me to say something cause I had ties and did machine reviews. But then when I, my 
uh, friends calling me and she's like, dude, there's someone <laughs> on Reddit talking about your video and you need to shorten it up because they're saying oh. like, we can't even get through with this guy's because it was like oh. an hour and a half because I go on all these tangents. Yeah. But it, it was one of those things where it was like every day there was an update and more yeah. and it just, it just seemed like this little tiny dark storm cloud was turning into a hurricane and it was approaching quickly. And that's how it felt like. It was just like the more oh. people heard about it. I don't, this is, might be digging digging my ditch further with Cricket. I am releasing a video on Sunday about the SEC filing, so we'll see where that goes. Um, we're, we're kind of uh, digging into what's in the report. So mm -hmm. that's something a lot of you guys have been asking about. So I got together with some, yet some other YouTubers, and we really got into what is what exactly is in this uh, Cricket IPO SEC filing. Again, it is pretty, we tried to be pretty fair. Um, we were just more talking like, like, details what's in mm -hmm. it not necessarily again this is not a this is not the we hate cricket show this is the what's what's going on and you know just sharing information especially with these with this sec filing it's so many pages to get through and i know people were having a hard time understanding it so we really just wanted to dig in and try to really explain what well, was in this report this so is this is not the time. we hate cricket this Correct. is not the we hate cricket show it's it's interesting because <laughs> this is the first time i think in a a, a crafting community space mm -hmm. that a company has went and filed for this ipo most of them are privately held and one of the great things on being privately held is you don't have you to don't release have to information. share that. yeah you don't have to share it and now all of this information is being shared so to me i was like i don't even care if you make the changes yeah. but you did it at the same time the ipo where people could yeah. go read it yeah and that's when people and it's it's a publicly available document it is. so and then it kind of further fueled the storm because these documents were available have you seen the report what I have, you, yeah. What do you think? What's your, I, you know, it's amazing how much money they are making off of the subscriptions. Like the profit margin, that is the bread and butter, clearly. Mm -hmm. It's not the machines. Yeah. So that was one thing I took away, and that's something we'll be talking about. So I want to ask you, Ken, though, you, I don't know anything about you, like really anything. Mm -hmm. Um, Do you have a day job? Do you do this channel full time? I, I literally don't really know you at all. Oh, like, I just want to know what, what, like, what's your backstory here? So I used to be uh, a banker, a bank okay. manager. I, I live in Spokane, Washington. Okay. And I bought a Cricut because I wanted to make like cards. And then it turned into uh, this part where as technology moves faster and faster, we had to teach around cutting machines and technology because it used to be the old cartridge mm -hmm. base and you'd put it in and, oh, that's what I and got. stuff. Yep. And so it, it I just started a, a YouTube channel and had fun with it. And then it's opened other avenues and different businesses. And so I've been able to uh, quit my nine to five and we just do this nine to five now and try to get as much education out there and create a community and, and help people with their buying decisions and creativity. Well, I'm and you so can help me learn how to sew because I do. Uh, so you do? Are I you, need to. Have you tried it? Okay. Okay, so I literally bought the maker thinking like, okay, I cut it on my pink mat. Why is it not sewn <laughs> together now? I you, just... <laughs> yeah, there's no... There, There is no, like, automated machine yet, really. I know. From, from what I understand, it's hard. Like, that's something that's hard to automate because the fabric is, like, not totally... It's a little bit stretchy. Even, like, yeah. not... Even woven fabric. So, from what I understand, that's what's so complicated about trying to make, like, a robot that sews... Um, or s something along those lines. All right, let me bring up your channel real quick. Um, so, guys, Ken's Creations. Obviously, you're oh. doing. You got 122,000 subscribers. You're doing all right there. Do you have a Glowforge? Because I know we in the do. comments you were you were really uh, showing some love for the Glowforge. And um, are you married? I assume, and that's your husband. Or that partner? is my my husband. I okay. guess my husband. I've been with him for 21 years. Aww. So, I guess. Right. Is this your second channel? Uh, that's my second channel. Second yeah. Channel. So okay. that's what you see behind you. This is a company called Chalk Couture. So it's uh, kind of home decor, but you don't have to use Ooh. vinyl and vinyl cutting machines and stuff. That's that that business probably was I started taking off. And that's when my relationship with Cricket ended kind of was that whole because uh, I was focusing so much on that secondary business. But we uh literally our our niche for the longest time was machines so we've reviewed the cameo we've reviewed the brother scan and cut we've reviewed uh the glow forge all of that and it's interesting that you brought that up because 
the Glowforge, it's also an online based program that you design and they have recently released basically an access feature where you can pay $16.99 a month and get all these added features. So I definitely think companies get it. They know the money is going to be made in these yeah. subscriptions. I hope sewing machine companies don't figure out how to do something like that. That would be really, uh, that'd be very crazy. Um, and yeah. Just from looking at your channel, it does seem like you and I kind of do um, have a similar thing because I do that kind of with sewing machines, what you do with the mm -hmm. crafty, with like the um, paper cutting and the uh, like your Glowforge. I kind of do that with so different sewing machines. And that's why I've been reluctant to work with brands is because I don't want to be brand exclusive like you don't. Um, because I know that if I tried to apply for like a brother ambassadorship or mm -hmm. like, you know, uh, Husqvarna, I know they would want exclusivity. And that's something I can't. Yeah. That's definitely something I can't give up. And I think that's something. And the other video that I'm working on with this other um, influencer team, um, we're going to talk more about the influencer uh, culture. And I've been kind of addressing that a little bit. But, you know, when you do work with brands and companies, there are certain responsibilities and things that you are contractually obligated to yep. that a lot of people don't really understand. Well, and it's, it's, it's a new world. And that's what I've been telling people. A lot of people will say, well, how do you make your money? And it's like, well, affiliates, people don't understand that it's yeah. not really commercials and all these advertisements. It's everyday people that are making these companies successful. And that's kind of where I felt on this whole cricket thing was not even their, um, you know, product experts and ambassadors. It was a lot of everyday crafters that promoted this company. They loved yeah. cricket and they still do. They, they are so many people in my group are saying, thank you for making this decision. We knew you'd make the right decision. So even though on a big scale, it may look like they messed up, they still have a very devout base, but we live in an affiliate culture. So it is yeah. very hard now. Is this person recommending a machine because they really like it or because they're getting money off of yeah. it? I, and, I, I do really like the affiliate programs just because there's not really a lot of over, like, I, I like them because there's not oversight. Like you really don't yeah. have anyone at the company saying do this or like make sure to talk about this or don't talk about this. I like the affiliate programs and I, I know you're probably in a few of these, yeah. but I, I prefer those because you don't really talk to a real person. I know that makes me sound kind of reclusive, but that it's, it's a lot different than an official sponsorship or partnership because you, you kind of do everything online and you don't talk yeah. to anyone and you just get codes. So I feel like that is a lot different than an official partnership exactly. or sponsorship. And I prefer the affiliate stuff because I decide what I feature and then link. Um, so I, I think if you, I think going the influencer route, I like that. And I think that's a way that you can still maintain a, a very large amount of objectivity because you are deciding what what products you're talking about or what you're trying to and uh, I, for me it's just stay, stay true to yourself you know yeah. like when i had some people say if you do this video you might upset them and i said but if i don't do this video what will that make me feel and look like like i i couldn't honestly say that this is a i understand the decision but i can't honestly say i would agree with it and so i really felt um i think i saw your video i saw auntie Tay's, and i was like mm -hmm. And people kept reaching out to me, what is your thoughts? What's your thoughts? Yeah, and I was like, I kind of need to step back away yeah. from it because, um, you know, I do know a lot of people, their brands rely on Cricut. And, and I'm not just talking ambassadors. Yeah, and there are, and, and there that. are some I'm channels. Talking... Yeah, there are some channels that are 100% Cricut videos. Like yeah. they don't do any other brand. I think that is, that has also kind of shown me this week, you don't put all your eggs in one basket. Like, and that's something that you've done pretty well by featuring different, brands mm -hmm. and I do that as well I've done so many different types of like videos like from so I built I had a series a while back where I built a dollhouse I have no children so that's a little mm -hmm. weird um so there's a lot of things you can do and I I hope the influencer community can take away that it's good to diversify I also do some freelancing on the side so the more you can diversify and yeah. not relying on a sponsorship from one company or from like one affiliate program, the better off you'll be in the end. And that kind of helps you also maintain a bit of your independence. Again, so you and I can make videos like the one, like the ones we've been making. Um, yeah. So I'm so glad you came on here. Yes, I saw well, you thank commenting. you for inviting. I'm so glad to meet you. Um, do you have anything else to plug? Are you, do you, do you have like a bit, you know, see. do you have any other businesses that you, uh, 
You know, if they just, uh, so I would love it if they subscribe to our channel and check yes. out our sister channel, which is, it's the same thing. It's called Chalk Couture, Ken's Creations. Right. And you can see kind of what we do because uh, that's what, that's what this is all about for me is seeing the Cricut, the Glowforge, all these different things they make, especially uh, women empowerment to start their own business. That's true. And to me, this was a huge reason we had to fight for this because you have people that literally have left nine to five jobs because of a cricket machine. Yeah. But um, this yeah, could have impacted. You're so right. I have a relative who um for extra income she definitely she has a cricket maker and she makes things to sell to like on a very small scale to family and friends. Um but this woman she's she's a single mother. Um she's a widow. Um so for her like or for and for people in that type of situation, I mean that this type of change can be can be very impactful. So even if you can easily afford the 10 bucks a month, yep. there are quite a few people out there that definitely do not need cricket access and don't want to pay for it. Yeah. Um, so that's a really good point because yeah, there are a lot of, um, a lot of people who use their crickets and their silhouettes and their brother scanning cuts for um, Etsy shops or for making things and, and using that for your extra, especially during a pandemic. I mean, yeah. it's been, it's been saying, and, you had mentioned too in your live stream, your viewership really spiked d at the beginning of COVID. Is that right? It did, yeah. That's so we, interesting. So people are is. really interested. Are you getting, um, has your audience changed from like in age? Are they getting younger? Like are more people, maybe Gen Z starting to get into I this? I do think it, they are getting into this. Um, but I also think that, uh, with everything, culture changes. I think uh, we're seeing a lot of stuff where uh, because of the pandemic and people are going live, they're wanting now shorter content. They're not mm -hmm. wanting the longer lives. And some people want the, the get to the point and tell me all the updates and stuff. But the one thing I've seen is the pandemic has, it's really um, helped the all the generations embrace social media and utilizing it so i could tell you before this we weren't seeing a spike in crafting because people were nine to five they you know went to the movies they did stuff so i think a huge reason cricket saw the spike it did is what are they going to do you know they can make masks there was a huge mask you know where people were buying crickets just to make masks and they were sitting at home they may have unfortunately been let go from their job and they were now you know making stuff so we saw a huge increase hi sean you can come in he's right, like is, what is he's like he's right, literally he's like, like what going? is happening all right let me full screen you guys all right hello sean here Hi, Jen. Hello. How's it Hello. going? How are, nice to meet you. This is such this is such a very random like thing. I'm so <laughs> very nice to meet you, Sean. Yes, you too. So, so Sean, are you the are you one, the, uh, the very, very first video we watched on the cricket updates? Yes. Oh yes. yes, yes. So, yeah. So Hello. Oh. Hello. <laughs> well, thanks for joining. Thanks for joining us. So Sean and Ken yes. with Ken's Creations. Yep. So Sean, I know you're on camera. I've seen you on camera with Ken. Mm -hmm. quite a bit do you do some of the shooting the editing like what kind of uh i do that how do you divide I do the work i i'm usually considered the the tech guy so okay. i will like our entire studio i put together with all the cameras the audio the lighting and everything so i got all that set up the computers uh then if we do video shooting to edit mm -hmm. then i'll shoot that and then edit that voiceovers music the whole bit and then he um pops it up on his uh his sites very cool. keeps me well, very keeps me very busy keeps you very busy how many hour like what's your typical um work pr like production schedule okay. like what like what you do you guys shoot on a certain day then edit or kind of sort of yeah kind of sort of sometimes we'll go uh we'll kind of set up our our uh a week to say hey uh we know we need to do this this and this and uh, if it gets to be done in the week and sometimes it may take longer than it should have then we might push it off to the next day or so but as long as we have a planned time for everything it's usually pretty good um our days i mean working from home and working with a business and everything can be very time consuming because a lot of things you just don't know might happen it's like oh like this. Boy, this is gonna take yeah like this all of a sudden you're doing this so yeah, yeah no, our days yeah, are, we are long very yeah, long she was saying the same thing like 
she didn't know like this whole thing would turn into what yeah, it, I didn't know it would did, be like but, a big yeah. did you were you guys like what is going on <laughs> like I didn't realize it was going to be this big of a thing like it, that's just been the craziest thing it has um, been it has been well thank you guys so much you're for welcome. joining me tonight I will let you enjoy the rest of your evening I guess thank you. you're in Washington so it's uh yeah. I don't even know what time it is it now. is uh 6 11 our time where are okay. you I'm in uh, Florida, so uh, it's uh, nine o'clock. Um, yes, I was gonna is. make I was gonna make strawberry shortcake. Um, I made that, that yesterday. That didn't happen. My husband <laughs> used all the whipped cream, so I had to go to uh -oh. the store today. Um, while I was while I was at the store, I accidentally mm -hmm. dinged the car next to me, so that turned oh. into a big, oh. um, big production. Um, then I came <laughs> home, and then as I was driving home, I was at the drive-through picking up some burgers. And right. then I got an email from Cricket with this news. So oh, I was yeah. trying to, then I was trying to rush home to try to figure out what I was going to do. I knew I had to do something. Mm -hmm. um, I was not, I don't usually do a whole lot of live streams. Uh, it's mm -hmm. been like a year since I, at least a year since I've done one. But um, yeah, we, I, I feel like you, you, our channels have been really trying to keep up with all the Cricket yeah. news. Yeah, it's, it's been just, crazy. It's, it's just crazy. Like, oh. Boom, boom, boom. It's very crazy. crazy. All right, well, I will let you guys go, but uh, you're you welcome much. back anytime. And Beautiful. I'm so Thank glad you. I at least got to meet you two because Ken yeah. was uh, in the comments. And I was like, you know, Ken has been doing some videos. I feel like he would be a good a good voice to have on here. <laughs> he, has so. a, he has a great voice. He, he has his uh, stuff put together and he knows his stuff. <laughs> so it's good. He's a good person to uh, pick his mind with. Well, it's very it's very nice to meet you both and you're welcome yes, you back too. anytime on the sewing Thank report you. open invitation you guys Perfect. have a great night all right let me try we to figure will. out uh <laughs> what i'm gonna do next all right bye sean bye-bye all right well guys that was ken and sean from ken's creations they were awesome people so all right man every time so every time a guest leaves i have the option it says like kick from studio or ban from studio and that sounds so incredibly mean okay julia says cowbutt crunchies cosplay has an excellent take on cricket's ipo strategy julia you'll be happy to know that the collaboration is with cowbutt crunchies cosplay so um we have teamed up and we have done two videos we're hoping to get these out on over the weekend uh one video will be digging into this sec filing so for anyone that just wants to know what this is all about and the other video is gonna we're gonna talk a little bit about our influencer experiences and also more about like what Ken and I talked about, about these cricket influencers and how they really had to take a lot of the heat for uh, all of the corporate stuff this week. So that's been pretty interesting. So I'm probably going to sign off pretty soon, but I'm so glad we got to have Grant and we got to have Ken and Sean from Ken's Creations. Um, and I'm going to keep reading some comments. I'm starting to feel a little like, like I'm going to lose my voice. Um, still drinking the water. All right, Nicole says, I never planned on using the pre-made designs. I was incredibly excited to make my own vector files to print. So I'll be even happier with the silhouette over Cricut personally. And I want to get a gauge too. Like, how do you feel towards Cricut now? Are you cool with it? Are you like kind of like a little bit distrustful? Do you feel like you're going to stick with your Cricut, but then maybe when that dies, you'll get something else? Um... I feel very, you know, I think as a customer, I feel like this is for now a satisfactory resolution. As someone who makes videos on this channel, though, I still feel very, I feel very um, iffy about making videos promoting Cricut. Um, again, I, I still, I have the maker, so I've already bought it. There's really no reason for me not to use something I bought. Um, but as far as giving cricket free publicity i'm not sure about that especially since i did reach out to them uh their pr team and they were they did get back to me but they i feel like i do feel like they kind of wanted me to go away and i don't you know I, I didn't get the best impression on dealing with their team um so i don't i don't know if i want to give them the, the the free advertising uh to be clear so i don't know um let me know what you think I, I did have a funny idea. I watch a lot of Korean dramas. And if you're not familiar with Korean TV, there is product, product placement up the wazoo on those shows. They have so much, like a massive amount of product placement. And whenever they don't have a car sponsor for a Korean drama, they will cover the logo up with black tape, like matte black tape. 
So I thought maybe I could do something like that. So if I am using uh, my vinyl cutter, I'm not giving the brand any, um, hopefully, any more promotion. So I've thought about covering that with tape. So if I do do it, I kind of don't refer to the brand. And then you don't see the logo. Uh, that's just something I'm thinking about. I'm not, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I, I, you know, I'm not going to... I'm not, and I'm not telling you to like jump ship from Cricut because let's be honest, any of these companies could make a decision like that and we don't know which one. So for all of you who are like, I'm running away from Cricut to Silhouette or Brother, we we really run the same risk with any of those companies. So, you know, they're kind of, we're kind of in the same boat anyways. But yeah, this, everything that's happened this week has sure, has surely eroded a bit of the, I think the brand, uh, their their brand uh you know like gr rating i guess i don't know so all right laura says definitely going to switch when the time comes i've been using cricket since 2012 and i own plenty of cartridges i only use what i own that's a good thought janine says i'm so worried because i just purchased the maker and the press Janine, I am with you. I own the Cricut Maker and I also bought the Cricut Easy Press 2 and the Cricut Easy Press Mini. So I own all of those things as well. I just feel a little strange about featuring the brand in videos, at least for now. Maybe one way I deal with this is just to not focus on those types of videos. Obviously, I do a lot of sewing and embroidery here, so I'll probably end up gravitating more towards those videos for a while and keep thinking about it but I don't uh yeah I don't know what I think about uh, about continuing to promote the Cricut brand here on the channel uh for free um so I don't know so Jamila says they are companies they could care less about our personal lives I mean yeah I guess that's that's fair all right Audrey says I I've had the maker for a few months and it isn't out of the box yet, so I don't think I need another cutter. Yeah, I'm in the, I, again, yeah, I only bought my maker, I think in, in August or September. Well, I'm, I'm not going to keep you guys any longer. I have been live for, man, two hours and I really appreciate everyone who's joining. And if you, if you enjoy videos and shows like this, uh, let me know below in the comments. Also, be sure to hit the thumbs up button button that really helps me in the YouTube algorithm and it I'd also really appreciate it if you enjoy these videos watch some of the others on the channel I've, I've got over 350 videos I've been on YouTube for a while guys even if you just found me this week that really helps YouTubers it, to watch like comment and subscribe so thank you so much I'm gonna try to make that strawberry shortcake soon I did get the strawberries ready I just have to make the whipped cream and then I have some pre-made shortcakes. So I'm going to try to eat something, but uh, you guys have a great night and look for the videos probably on Sunday. We do have to kind of re-edit because in light of the new information, I want to make sure that that is included into the uh, video because we do have some like now dated references. So I'm going to have to take a look at what we shot and kind of rework it a little bit just so that we're up to date with everything that's going on so that there's no misinformation in there. Yeah, it was really cool to have Ken. I saw him here in the comments. Uh, and also, if anyone knows, oh, Auntie Tay. Wait, Auntie Tay. Hey, do you want to come on the show, Auntie Tay? If you have a webcam, for real, I will stay, Auntie Tay, I will stay here for you. If you have a webcam and a mic and you want to jump on the the show live. I'd love to talk to you because I saw some of your videos. Email Auntie Tanea, email me at sewingreport at gmail.com and I'll send you a link to jump on here. So I, I see you watching and I really appreciate it. I would love to have you, uh, you know, just chat because I know you also have had some experience as a cricket influencer and I know you've made a few videos. So if you're interested and you got some time, I would love to bring you up here like we did with Ken to chat. So let me know. I'll, I'll stick around for a few more minutes. I feel like I have celebrities watching. Like these people have like very big, much bigger channels than me. And it's very like flattering that they're like actually, that they're actually like watching this. It's a little pressure too because I'm like, oh, I feel so. And every time this has happened, I'm it's on a day that I was not expecting to shoot anything. And if I am not shooting anything... You better believe I'm not wearing makeup. And I'm also dealing with some like weird acne this week. So that's been uh, fun. 
but I had to try to like get ready real quick and jump on here. So, okay, Auntie Tay, you're driving, but let's book it. Okay, Auntie Tay, how much longer do you think it will be when you get, yeah, we'll stay. This is such a, this is such a, I love randomly fun things like this. Okay, so she is trying to get home. This is awesome. Yeah, Auntie Tay, if you are, all right, you're on your phone. Um, Auntie Tay, if you are, if you're close to your house, we can wait until you get to your house. This thing doesn't work that well when you're on the phone. Like, it, the signal is going to be real, like, choppy. Uh, but if you're, all right, I was going to say, if you're, if you're close to your house, let me know. Because I, um, this software doesn't recommend you do it on the phone just because the signal, um, you know, you know, our Andy Tay, you know, yeah, we can give it a shot. It might be a little choppy, but um, let's give it a shot. Let's give, this is so fun. All right. Email me at sewingreport at gmail.com and I will send you the link to get in here. It might be, depending on how your cell phone signal is, that's what like really um, tends to affect the live stream. Oh my gosh, this is so funny. That's cool that you're watching though. All right, so we'll hold off on the strawberry shortcake for a little bit and then, and then see. Okay, so if you email me, I will definitely bring you up here. Let me try to... I cannot, I still can't believe at the beginning I accidentally clicked my mouse button and then it like totally got me out of the, uh, the stream. That was, uh, that was, uh, uh not great. Um, and Kenneth just sent me a very nice email. All right, I'm going to email Ken back. All right, StreamYard is awesome. Okay, so yeah, and I use the software called StreamYard. It is a little bit pricey, especially if you want the HD plan, but it's already proved to be, I guess, very useful. So I'm glad I have it. And it's been really fun to have. All right. So Auntie Tay, if you have an email. All right. Auntie Tay, I'm not, um, I probably can't type it in here. Um, just cause I don't want everyone, you know, actually, you know, screw it. Okay. Guys, just know that this link I'm posting in the chat, please do not and let Auntie Tay be the only one that clicks it. So guys, please do me a solid. Um, only Auntie Tay tried to access this this link. Um, and it's not a big deal because after this is over, it won't be, it'll be like void. So it's really no big deal. Um, and I think we're almost, you know, once Auntie Tay goes on, we're, you know, I don't think I'm going to be going all night or anything. Although if you think I talk a lot, I once did a 24 hour live stream with my realtor friend as we were trying to do a charity fundraiser. Um, it, at the time, it didn't go that well, but, I, and I realized afterwards that YouTube only archives 20, 12, up to 12 hour live streams, not 24. So the video is still in like limbo. So that's, you know, so we, we lost like all 24 hours of the footage because YouTube has it like tied up, but we learned a lot from the experience and the channel is doing pretty well now. So. I, I, if you think I can talk here, I, I can keep going. So 24 hours. All right. Auntie Tay is attempting to, all right. Are you here? Is this Tanea? This is the coolest thing I've ever seen. Yeah. So I'm using, yeah. And Ken just emailed me to ask me what software I'm using and yeah. it's called StreamYard. It's really great. And I, I bought it for another podcast I do. And I, I was like, well, I guess I can use it for whatever. And I didn't, I don't usually go live or anything. So uh, this has been really like a strange week. Um, and it's light where you are. Where? Uh, it's still California. light outside. It's, California. It's okay. Yeah. We've got a probably half an hour of more sunshine. Wow. All so. right. Okay. So you did a live stream earlier. I didn't get a chance to see it because I was getting ready for my own. Um, what? What's your biggest takeaway from update number three? <laughs> um... <laughs> I just don't want to spend a whole nother weekend thinking about this, you know? Like, Are you sick of this? I'm so sick of it. It feels like it's been a month. And when I realized we haven't even hit a week since the first update, I was just, I was dumbfounded. I was like, wait a second. We're not even a week into this and we've had three updates. Three. Three updates. And for like a crafting company, this is not at all normal. No. Um so, so what do you, do you feel, um, I know you are an ex cricket influencer, um, and now, and you, you still, and I, I, and I've seen enough of your live streams because like Ken, you also didn't want the brand exclusivity. You wanted to be able to talk about other brands. 
Um, what do you, are you, as a customer, are you satisfied with, with this resolution? And as an influencer, how do you feel about uh, the, the company conduct of this week? Um, as a customer, I, I feel like it would be very, very hard to trust just what is even going to happen. I don't, um, I can't vouch for anything anymore. I, mm. I can't trust a lot of the influencers that are influencing for them. Not that they're doing anything, but just that they're being strung along through this too. Mm. So they have no idea what's going on. The fact that a business will make a choice that quickly and not even update the people who are working with them who have signed contracts like that even solidifies even more that even if they wanted me back as an influencer i would never like mm. i would i would just never i would never work with a company that can change their mind that quickly that will every single update they've done has has like derailed a ton of people you know yeah, this has been rough. Okay, so I asked Ken this question. Since okay. you have more of an inside knowledge of the the people at Cricket, what do you think they thought of my videos this week? <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, okay, to be honest, I don't know the current staff and okay. who the current staff are. I do know there's been a lot of change of staff since I did work with them. And um, a couple other influencers have touched on the staff uh, just how much they have fired staff since we did work with them. So a mm. lot of the staff don't even know how invested we really were. Mm. And a lot of them got fired when we got fired. Okay. And so I don't know the staff that's there, but I do know how the CEO reacts and thrives off of the influencers saying negative things about other companies. Mm. But in the flip side, also can't stand when negative things are said okay. about which you didn't say negative or positive you literally stated facts i i just i really tried to be non um, i tried to be not um rant too ranty yeah and more just here's what here's the situation yeah. um i i don't think they're and i was telling ken this i don't think they are used to dealing with somebody like me in this space no. they're used to dealing with the crafty mom bloggers I am not that at all. Um, and I, I feel like they didn't know what to do with me. Like, that's the impression I get from just trying to email them. Because I, I don't know if you're aware, I used to be a CNN producer. No. And I started this channel when I was working at CNN. Okay. Um, so that's my background. So I've been, I worked in news for 15 years. And um, and I have the, the ability to news gather. So that's kind of what I did with the video. I and. That's the thing, like, I felt like I had deja vu from those days. I'm like, and this feels like covering one of these stories that never ends. Yes. Um, like, I've been, I've covered a lot of really dark stories. Um, I started working at CNN a couple weeks before Sandy Hook. Um, and then I also covered um, some other stories that lasted forever. The Flint water situation. Um, what else? The Boston Marathon bombings. I know, real lighthearted stuff here. Uh, the Las Vegas mass shooting. Um, so I'm used to dealing with stuff that's calibers darker than this. This is like a craft company. Um, right. But but the way I approached them this week was as like a reporter would. Um, I sent them some questions and I said, hey, would you be willing to go on the channel with me? Or we could tape something or even just a statement. And all they did was they just sent me the blanket statement right when they sent, right when they published it online. Yeah. So th I don't get the feeling that they wanted to you know, work with me at all or like have like an open line of communication. And every time I would get an email from them, it was just, so are you going to update your information? I don't think they liked the videos and I don't think they liked the fact that they were getting traction. I think that probably like maybe annoy. I think I, maybe they saw me more as annoying. I don't think they're, you know, I, I, I don't know if they hate me or something, but I think it's more, a more of like a thorn in the side. That's kind of, that's sort of the uh, vibe I get, I guess. Yeah, and, and I think there's a lot of thorns in their side right now, so many that they're being forced to cave. and But they don't have to. Like, they could stand firm in the first decision that they picked, you know, and we would just have to deal with it. Not a big deal. We would all get over it. The fact that they've come back and retracted it because of all these thorns in their side. But... I love that people like you and 3D Musketeers. Yeah, his video on, was awesome. Yeah, 
I, I've been entertained this week. <laughs> like, thank you. You guys have brought the heat and finally, like, I am not the only one saying it. I am emotionally involved. So some of my words can be taken as very biased. And mm -hmm. the fact that both of you guys aren't even in the cricket realm. Yeah, we don't, I don't have any, you know, I own a cricket, but again, I don't work. And I, I, I feel like, um, and I asked cricket if they wanted to come on this live stream. They, they declined. Right. Um, I think they, I don't think they like any situation where they're not in control of, um, which is why I think if they do anything video wise, it will either be on their own channel or maybe they would do one of their other influencers channels and do something like that. But they would never do a channel like mine. So yeah. I already know that. And I was not, and that's the thing when you're reaching out to, um, companies always want you to cover them with press when it's good. They never want to hear from you in bad times. And right. I've dealt with this a lot. They just want you to, they just want you to go away. Right. Um, so I kind of kept at it. And then I think after the second update, I don't, they didn't know, like I ended up doing a live stream. And again, so the, the title was like cricket sort of backs off. Mm -hmm. And I don't think they liked that because that was certainly not like a love fest. And I don't, I don't think that I, I just don't think they know what to do with me. Like that's, that's what I think from here on out. They're like, this This girl is crazy, but. Um. And yeah, and that's, that's really the issue at hand is they have been a company for years that have been praised for every single mm -hmm. thing they do because they do come out with some really amazing things. They're, and Ken and I have both stood behind this. Mm -hmm. they, they have nothing to be afraid of. Their machine is top of the line. If they just stood by that and worked with integrity many many people would stay with them we wouldn't have issues like this and if you did make a mistake it wouldn't be the end of the world we would totally understand but now we have people like you coming out of nowhere in the <laughs> world saying things and they're realizing oh, okay wait we we actually put something out there that is not is no longer just evoking emotion from our cross influencers we are evoking emotion from the world right now because what we did was wrong and they don't want to own up to that. I don't think they will. I don't like just, just knowing the people that I do know that are still there at such high positions. I do. I could probably call that they will probably not publicly come out to you, to anybody to talk about it at mm -hmm. all. They might send a poor little staff member to sit in front of a table with some pretty craft behind them and have to address this. And they might not. They might just hope to, to sweep it under the rug. And that's just track record with them. Now, you have a very large following over on YouTube. Is your audience, is your community, do you think that the damage has been done already? Do you think, what can, what could Cricket do to uh, revive the faith? Like, what, what do you think it would take? Um... Personally, my my community is is a lot of everyone else's cricket community as well. We we do a good job of supporting each other, and my audience is a lot of the other people's audience. So, seeing how badly this hurt not just us anymore, it's hurting the actual community. It's just going to take a lot for us to even trust them. I know for some of us, it was our livelihood that they tried to take away. Yeah. Um, for for all of the the crafters out there, it's not a huge deal that they're taking away this little hobby they might have, mm -hmm. but it hit so many people all at once that I think, I don't think they realized the impact they had. I mm -hmm. don't think they realized it's far more than what they just chose to do. It's how they chose to do it. And they crossed a lot of people and a lot of people are probably just not going to get over that. Mm -hmm. So, in your opinion, what should I do with my cricket? Should I keep it? Should I keep doing videos on it? What, what do you, what do you recommend? I love the cricket machine, and I couldn't in my, I couldn't in my heart ever tell somebody to get rid of their cricket. I, I just couldn't, and that is the hardest part. And mm -hmm. that is the hardest part. I think for, for me and Ken, we both feel this way. Is we genuinely love our cricket machine. And we genuinely loved working with their company. And we had no problem saying positive, positive things about them. But the people of the company had no problem just cutting us off as if we were nothing. Yeah. 
And so if you are one of those people who just can't support a company because of the ethics, then it might be time to get rid of your cricket. But the machine itself is so dang good. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, and that's the, yeah, the, the thing, you know, it's, uh, and I, I, what, I am a premium member. I still have the, my membership I paid annually. So I have it for another like five months or so. So I'm not, I, you know, I was just saying before you jumped on, I, I think I will probably continue to use it until the um, subscription ends. I don't feel, at this point, I don't feel like I can renew it. I also don't, after, I will say, after reading the SEC filing and figuring out how much money they make and how much they bragged about their low-cost marketing, I don't feel good about giving them free advertising. Right. Uh, so if I feature, if I do end up ever doing anything with it, I'm going to cover, I think I'm going to cover up that logo Korean drama style. Uh, so I'm probably going to do that, but I just don't, the the idea of just continuing to give this company uh, free marketing, I don't think I can do that unless, yeah. you know, something else changes. But as a customer, I am glad and I think we should all consider it a win that they at least went back on this yeah. and have for now committed to not uh, charging people for the for the for the software uploads. Yeah. Um, so that is a good thing. And we should definitely take that at take 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 the W. Um, but I, I'm a little bit cautious about what this company is going to do in the future. But any company could do that. So it's not like it's not right. like Silhouette and Brother couldn't do that, too. So I'm just not, you know, so maybe someone else will maybe there will be another competitor in the future. Maybe this will motivate some other company to make their own cutting machine. Yeah, I don't know. So I watched a few of your live streams and I'm can you ex, can you walk people through exactly what what happened with your with you and Cricket when you ended the business relationship? Like what went down? Um, yeah, I was just in a, a chaotic time of life and, um, crafting is many people's therapy. And so I, I, I used my business as a form of therapy basically. And at the time they were coming out with mystery boxes mm -hmm. and, um, I was very new to the mystery box world. Apparently it had been around for a long time and they sent me one to my door and had I had no idea what it was. I opened it and mm. showed it live. I had probably about 40 cricket staff calling me oh. saying, get this off the internet what? right now. This doesn't launch till 6 p.m. Oh our my gosh. Time. Um, and Wait, they have an embargo on cricket mystery boxes? That's oh, crazy. Oh yeah, sharks. It was <laughs> sharks. And I, and I said, I volunteer every Tuesday at seven o'clock. So if your um, mystery box comes out at seven, I will, I will want to be live at like 630, please. Um, or can you send it to me like a week early so I could actually craft with it like normal people want to do with their mystery box. So I'm not just a QVC show off what you're selling. And, um, and they really baited with a lot of money. Like it was more of like, well, you make a ton of money on this mystery box, so you huh. will promote it when it comes to your door. And we'll try to get it to you early, but it would often show up at my door at 4 p.m. And I would be expected to have a video up at 7 p.m. The same day? That's that's pretty the short same turnaround. Day. The same day. Oh so God. I ended up um, just telling them, like, hey, I'm down for the Cricut mystery box. I like it, but please just let me get creative with it. I really would love – I think we could sell more, but they'd sell out in, like, 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. So if you even imposed on anybody else's commission, you would be, like, so in trouble with, with other people who are making commission, which I get. Like, that is yeah. dipping into the profits of other 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 affiliates. So um, I, I fell into the mystery world, and then they started launching, like, one a week. And that was my final straw. They they were um, they were launching like every single week, coming to my door, and then they were like, "You want you need to be live if you want to make your extra couple thousand dollars this month or whatever that's, it was." Because that's you're strange. Money. And so it, it it was, and it wasn't necessarily like you have to do it, but we definitely felt the pressure. Like if we weren't on that minute, it would sell out, and we would miss out on all mm -hmm. of our commission. Got and it. very competitive and exciting at the same time, but then. I lost myself. I was like, I am, I'm literally just QVCing every Tuesday and making a ton of money off of this box that sits there. And then the next one comes and I show that and the next one comes, I show that I'm not crafting anymore. Like 
I'm not, I'm no longer having fun with my business anymore. And so um, I told them I will no longer do mystery boxes with you guys. They actually crashed their site. So mystery boxes took a, took a break for a mm-hmm. while. And so we were out of a lot of money, like for some mm-hmm. of us who, who loved making that extra money, um, the mystery box went on pause. And so my entire community was like, can you guys make your own mystery box? And I was like, maybe I can. And Cricket kind of silenced on me for about six months. Mm-hmm. And I decided to look into Caesar and other products and found that I loved them. I worked with another company to produce my own mystery box who I still work with this, to this day, who I love dearly. Um, and they helped me promote, create my own product. And I launched it and lo and behold, guess who I heard from the day that I launched it. Finally, um, they sent a little staff member in to do the dirty work and then they mm-hmm. ended up firing that staff member the day of because she didn't say on top of communicating with me through the last six months and it was not her fault at all but they nixed her that and sounds like a very strange work environment like it that. was and and it was very it, um she and i had a, a personal relationship because mm-hmm. she would constantly be like i'm talking to the brand they're not responding i'm talking mm-hmm. to the brand they're not responding she would be communicating with me but she would never be able to communicate what the brand wanted because mm-hmm. they didn't really care they were like, we don't really care what that Antite girl is doing. Sure, she wants to get creative, but we don't want to get creative with her. But when mm-hmm. I wanted to get creative with my own products, they really wanted to care. And so I came out with the Summer Mystery Box. It's all documented. Like, you can see it right on my channel. Came out with the Summer Mystery Box, and I got threats the day of, you take this off the internet now. I said, it's already sold out. It sold out in three hours. I'm sorry. Just like we would have sold out yours, but we, you don't do them anymore right now. Um, basically told me you pull them or we pull your affiliate link right now. Wow. And I said, well, I just made a lot of money on my own mystery yeah. box. So your affiliate threat doesn't really threaten me because I'm doing my own products. Um, so they fired my liaison and hired on a new girl who had no idea who I was and sent her in to do the dirty work to call me every single day for three weeks to threaten with a new deal. Like we will pay you what you wanted in the beginning when you wanted to make a contract with us. And I said, Mm -hmm. "Um, no, thank you. I don't want to do that. And so it was just a, um, it was a three week of me just really seeing some true colors and just Mm -hmm. going, why on earth would I want to work with somebody who was, you took the livelihood of one of the only staff members I really knew there who was nothing but good to me and nothing but good to the other influencers as well and a lot of influencers were very hurt by her getting taken out because Mm -hmm. that was our that was our connection to cricket we didn't talk to the ceo we didn't talk to anybody else but the influencer manager and and that 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 cut deep that they would take somebody's Mm -hmm. livelihood like that just instantly how do you, and hers. How do you feel Cricket Corporate um, feels about like you and Ken and some other ex uh, Cricket affiliated folks talking like this? Do you think they're like freaking out? <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. they cringe. I think they hate it. And I think um, <laughs> I've stayed silent for a really long time. Like I didn't want to bring up drama. I didn't want to drag go backwards in any way i've all i've been on this amazing trajectory with my own membership so i i've not once felt the need to speak up about any of it but that is crazy like the fact that is so 3d musketeer says that is harassment yeah and i don't want to make him any more mad than he already is oh gosh it, it is it's gotten me fired up and the more we talk about it the more the influencers who left cricket I, I just I just don't think it's a very wise business choice to um, cut off your main your main influencers that are literally bringing you millions of dollars. I was I was told I was bringing in more sales than QVC. Okay, yeah. I can why see that. would you Why would you cut yeah. someone off? Like I could see why they wanted a three week negotiation, yeah. but why threaten me? Why not? work with me and go, well, maybe we could do a mystery box together, or maybe you can do your own mystery box and we can, it, it, it was what it was. It was seven months of my time working on my own product that they could have intervened far yeah. before it was fully executed. You know? Oh my gosh. That, why, why does there have to be that much drama for craft products? Like that's, 
you know, it's not there. This is so un, it's just so unnecessary. It seems like this company really wants to exert a level of control over the influencers that might be a, a, a bit, you know, over the top, maybe. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and, and now I have my own brand and I have my own influencers. And many of my influencers have let me know that um, Cricket will let them know they will work with them as long as they have nothing to do with me. Wow. So, so it's cutting so, off it's cutting off extra influencers because That sounds um, a little petty. Like yes. uh, why why go that I so I'm currently a cricket affiliate. I'm going to guess that might not last very longer much longer. Um yeah. you know, so I'm I'm expecting that, but uh that's that's totally fine cuz that's really not uh not not a big deal to me. So whatever. And you know, as I was saying the other night, if I had had a bunch of sponsorship partnerships with like big companies, I wouldn't be able to do these videos. That is for sure. Like right. if I was partnered with Joann's, Joann sells cricket. I'm sure that would be a problem. Um, so that's something where I think if this had not happened, I don't think uh, like the viewers like you watching would kind of realize um, that it is important sometimes to have people who don't have those ties uh, to make these types of videos like we do um, so that y you guys know what's going on, Absolutely. you know, and it's not just all hearts and flowers in cricket land. Um, you know, I'll be frank. I don't, I don't give a damn. Like, I just don't care. Yeah. Um, I don't know what they can do to me, you know, if they want to try whatever, but um, you know, I'm not their enemy, but I'm also not a cricket cheerleader. Right. I, I don't, I, I really don't have, um, this is not the I hate cricket show. Like right. I'm just trying to talk about what's going on. And if another, if Silhouette next week does something crappy, I'll talk about that too, if you guys yeah. want. If if company, you know, I've talked a lot about Craftsy. That seems to be like a, another video that's getting viral, um, I guess. But, you know, it's just, um, it's been so interesting though to hear from, from people in your situation who've worked with this company. Um, and, you know, after reading the Leah Griffith statement about how, you know, they just really, like, don't want you to talk about any competing products other yeah. than Cricut. Yeah. Um, and, again, you sort of get that as a brand, you know, if you're having a deal. But at the same at the same time, you you know, you guys have to realize that the people that are sponsored by Cricut, they're not going to make videos like this because they can't. Right. Um, you know, and you commented on some of my videos, so thank you very much. You mm -hmm. did get so a few haters, um, some kind of strange comments, but, you know, I, I see where you're coming, and I've seen some videos, um, you know, and I, I can understand in your situation how you did not want to come off like you would sour grapes. Yeah. Um, and you seemed, you seemed concerned about people having that impression. Um, but, you know... A, this experience, man, what a what a crazy... How long did you work with Cricket for? Two years. Two years. Yeah. They were my first major sponsor, so I never experienced what it felt like to work with any other brands, and so they kind of scared me away from working mm. with brands, but yeah. now that I've worked with many, many brands, many other brands. I, it makes me realize, okay, you guys definitely are jack okay. of all trades when it comes um, to the way that you value us. So, so compared to the other brands you've worked with, um, do you feel like, do you feel like Cricket could make some improvements in the way that they, uh, have relationships with, uh, influencers? Absolutely. Um, I base my entire influencer members or my, my influencer, uh, like the way I treat my influencers off of how they did with us because mm -hmm. everything they did, I want to do the opposite. I do not mm -hmm. make my influencers sign NDAs. Mm -hmm. I do well, not I NDAs about new products. I yeah. do, but non-compete clauses. We don't okay. do that. Like if somebody comes out with a better product than me, guess what Wait. I'm going to do? I'm going to try to make a better product. So it's like, like I said, they have nothing to be afraid of. They can legitimately treat their influencers like gold and those influencers will treat them like gold. That's just how it works when you've got the best product on the market. You need to be kind and you need to be loving to the people who are promoting your products. Otherwise, they're not going to be happy to promote your products anymore. So Cricket has, an, do they have NDAs and uh, uh, non-compete clauses for influencers? Of course, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what are, what's in are you able to say what uh kind of you know what kind of uh specifics there are or no? It's it's it okay depends if you can't. On, 
it depends on what campaigns you're working on. If you're working okay. on a one-on-one campaign with them, they do everything from, you know, like we're going to send the mug press out to 40 people. Mm-hmm. Probably people just had to sign an NDA. Like we can't discuss it or mm-hmm. talk about it, but we can say what we want. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're making affiliate money off of it. So of course they want to make sales, but they go all the way to the route of like, if they're going to be on QVC and they're bringing Mm -hmm. an influencer on QVC, you're definitely going to have to sign something that says like, I refuse to say this. I will not talk Mm -hmm. about other competitor competitors. You know, it's all normal business Mm -hmm. stuff, but at the same time, like it's just, it, it doesn't, have to be there if your product really is that amazing i get release dates like you don't want things to come out too soon you don't want anybody to know about things that you're you're excited about a release date you don't want people to talk about it beforehand um but it is very petty i've seen you know i've seen i've seen people up in the middle of the night making sure nobody's talking about like the cricket joy when it came out you know it it is just a lot it's it's a lot (laughs) Oh my, so, and you said they also have non-compete clauses. What kind of, uh, what kind of uh, details are in those? Like you can't work with other brands for a certain amount of time or yes. something like that? And, okay. Yeah, and that's definitely normal in mm-hmm. any sponsorship deal, whether it's crafting or not. Obviously, like if I'm working with Hobby Lobby, I'll just use people I've never used before. But if like Hobby mm-hmm. Lobby doesn't want me to work with Joann's, um, they might say you cannot work with Joann's for six months from mm-hmm. our campaign, but they can't uh, put like a con- non-compete for the rest of your life unless you sign yeah. on away. Man, I, I thought TV contracts were bad. You're making it look, <laughs> you're making that look uh pretty pretty rosy right yeah tv contracts are notoriously bad for reporters and for talent um so if you're not familiar with the business a lot of these beginning reporters they make like twenty thousand dollars a year um they don't get over most of them do not get overtime um there is a non-compete for about six months and uh, for some contracts i signed a contract as a producer where if i left my contract early i had to pay out the rest of my contract ten percent which yeah. was insane. It also had language like if I started a business um, during my time working there, they could claim or oh, like it was in, I should that contract was really um, one very one sided. Um, but what that does with TV people is um, it, they'll say like if you work at, you know, you work at you live in California, right? Yeah. OK, so say I was working at um, KCBS in Los Angeles. I have a, I have a contract with a non-compete for six months. So after I leave, I can't work at any other station in the market for six months. So that person ends up having to move cities. Yes. So that's what it forces TV people to do is they can't stay in the same city. Um, unless the, in most TV people, you know, they don't usually have a lot in savings. I'm going to be real with you. They're not great. They don't tend to be great with money. Um, so they will not have enough savings where they can hang out for six months and then work at uh, KABC. So right. that's why you see TV people move around. I did not realize they had non-competes in craft contracts, like especially for that level. And the NDA, I guess I can see, but that level, again, again, if you're trying to be an influencer, the stuff you have to deal with like this, uh, you know, can be a little bit overwhelming and you have to know what you're getting into. Like you obviously you do. That is just, it's just like nuts though. So yeah. do you think there's someone at Cricket whose job it is to like go through the subreddit and see like what people are saying about it? <laughs> honestly, <laughs> if sadly, they're that weird. Okay, so honestly, it, it there probably is, but I will attest to the fact that uh, the CEO himself does a lot of that dirty work himself. Uh, there, who's there, got the time for that? <laughs> I know, right? There's been moments when he will send Facebook messages to people and ask them to take comments down. And a lot of us are like, don't you have a company to run? Like, mm-hmm. don't you have a product to launch? Like, how are you, how do you even have time to sit there and look at all the comments from, I, I know it, that was the last experience I had was when the joy launched um, because they really did not want anybody talking about the joy before it came out so he was like a hawk watching all the facebook groups like if he saw the word joy come out he would be like can you he would like literally message them like can you take this down please and they'd be like no (laughs) that sounds that sounds very strange so all right situation say somebody left leaves a negative comment about cricket on your channel but not your comment would someone at Cricket ask you to remove that or do they not care about that sort of thing? 
I don't know if they would ask an active influencer to do it because I don't really talk to active influencers right now, but um, they would never, ever think that that would be something that I would even do. So I don't think they would even waste okay. their time. Okay. Yeah. I was just one. I was wondering because there was some, um, some talk on the subreddit about certain influencers removing comments from their channel or from right. their social media platforms. Right. So I was just wondering if Cricket would maybe have any sort of uh, pressure on those people to do that or if they were, you know, if that was happening, if that was uh, an action, an individual action or if they were getting pressured from uh, the corporate level. That is, woo, that is super crazy. Right. Are you glad? Are you, you know, are you? You seem pretty glad that you are out of that situation, I'm assuming. It has oh, been, a, yeah, yeah. It, it, I mean, and, and to see the night and day of what the people are saying who are no longer partnered versus the ones who yeah. are very partnered. And the fact that we don't talk negatively about the company mm. outside of this situation just shows that yeah. we don't really care what they do. We love them to be successful. We don't want them to... Obviously, a lot of these in active influencers are our friends. We talk mm -hmm. to them. We use them. We we are always in communication with them. We don't want Cricket to go down. All of their – that's mm -hmm. all – we love that they're partnered with them. Um, I just feel like once we get to a certain size, they kind of they kind of brush you off once you're a certain mm -hmm. size, which doesn't make any sense to me. But, yeah, I don't I – don't, I don't know. Well, I really appreciate you pulling over in your car, yeah. uh, jumping on here – and in sharing your experience as a, an ex cricket influencer, that is so, oh my gosh, that is insane. Let me pull up your channel too, so people can. Obviously, I know a lot of you guys, I'm sure, already are subscribed to Auntie Tay, but if you're not already, I looked at a few of your videos and I, I jumped on your. I'm kind of interested in the sublimation, I'm not gonna lie. And you did say you're gonna make some more silhouette videos, so yes. I will be there for that because I, I think I'm about 80% sure I'm gonna get one. So yeah. I'm. I'm trying to decide. I'm trying to decide. And after talking to that guy, Grant, I think we might do some uh, fun comparison videos. Yeah. So maybe we'll do something like that. Because I'm still kind of new to this whole... Well, I'm not new, but I have a Cricut expression from 2009, and I barely used it. So right. that's why I, That's why for a long time I just wasn't interested in getting another one. But the difference between that one and the new ones were that I liked that you weren't just limited to the cartridges. Right. I um, mean, you could do anything you wanted, you know, as long as you are able to upload things, I guess. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, definitely, guys, check out Auntie Tay's channel. Um, do you have anything else you would like to say or add? Like, I really no. appreciate everything and all the support you've given me in the way of co co nice comments and, and yeah, adding your own live streams. Of course, so. I love it. Yeah, no, just that our crafting membership works well with the silhouette and we're going to be working on making our files work well with the Brothers Game and Cut and we have sublimation files. So it's it's scary to us that they're trying to do that, but we're so excited that they decided not to do that because that's going to be a win for all of our communities. So, yeah. but thank you for speaking up and doing what you're doing. Um, you do it so well, and oh, I thank listen you. to you all day, and I'm so excited to watch your sewing content. Like, you're amazing, so. I really appreciate it. This has been the weird, it just has been the strangest Weirdest. week ever. Um, so but I'm really glad I've gotten to meet some real, uh, some cool new friends, and you are welcome here anytime. And also, um, my, uh, you know, sewingreporter at gmail.com, if you have anything um, going on with your company or anything, uh, send it my way and I may yeah. talk about it in the future or if you have anything you're really excited about. So I'd be happy to do that. Um, and you have a great evening in California where it's still light outside and here it's <laughs> super dark. Uh, but I really appreciate it. And uh, I know a lot of our viewers here really enjoyed hearing about your experience and everything you w went through. I just, yeah. I just cannot believe it. Well, I'll let you go and you have a great rest of your day. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye. All right, guys, that was Auntie Tay uh, reporting live from her car. So I am so this. Wow, this show ended up working out really uh, uh, interestingly. All right. So we got well, I'll read a few more comments and then I will uh, head off. OK, Cindy, it reminds me of another social media watcher tweeting from the bathroom. All right. Hey, you got to You got you got to be in your phone everywhere. I mean, doesn't don't we all do that, I guess? All right. Um, oh, this is a good one. You can slap your own logo on the machine and make covers so we never see it. Background. That's, I'm going to have to consider that. That is a good one. I just don't, I don't really want to, 
yeah, I, they're, they're not getting any free plugs for me. I mean, this whole show is titled Cricket, uh, but again, this is not, I don't think this is the type of public relations that we're hoping for. Um, 3D Musketeers is still with us. All right, I think I'm going to sign off and finally make Strawberry Shortcake. I also have to look through the uh, videos I'm working on because I got to do some re-edits uh, to include the new updates. Uh, so guys, look forward, hopefully on Sunday, that's what we're planning, uh, Cow Butt Crunch Crunchies Cosplay and I are doing a collaboration where we are kind of deep diving into more of this cricket situation. And I think at that point, unless something else crazy happens, that's probably going to be the last time for a while I will cover this. I hope this situation is over. I I really do. I hope this... Okay. Christine says, I think you need to share a picture of... I'll try. Uh, my plating is not very good, so I don't know how... I don't know how good it'll look. And my husband, um, he's, he, he's a trained chef, and whatever, he doesn't... He gets a little frustrated whenever I post, like, non-pretty food pics. It kind of drives him crazy. So I really appreciate everything. Um, but, all right, so, but I'll try. If I can take a picture, I might post it later. Uh, and, if, and if anyone who's new here and came here for the Cricut stuff and you want to learn about sewing and crafting, I have a lot of videos here. You're welcome to check it out. I also occasionally do interviews with uh, other people in this space. Uh, so I've got a few of those up. And I've got, the like, there are so many random videos on this channel. I used to do live streams. Like, I've done it all. I feel like I've done it all. I do have a five-hour live stream where I was, like, making masks and eating pizza. So if you enjoy this type of content, uh, definitely hit the thumbs up button. Leave a comment if you're watching the replay below in the comment section. And it really helps to watch most or all of the video. Obviously, this one's super long, so I would totally understand if you didn't, you know, that's that's a pretty big time commitment. Um, and subscribing and watching other videos really helps too. And also, if you like this video, share this channel with a friend and uh, and help us help us grow here. So um, I'm trying to think if I can get to 100,000 subscribers, I want to do something fun. If you have any ideas for that too, I am certainly open. I will definitely be doing stuff with Grant from 3D Musketeers, so he's a really fun person, and I am really excited. All right, guys, I will see you later. I'm signing off, and uh, hopefully hopefully this is it for the cricket news. If it's not, I don't know what I'm going to do because I, I got to eat at some point. So I'll let you guys go, and I'm going to try to end this live stream. We'll see if I can figure this out. All right, have a good night. I'm Jen with The Sewing Report. See you guys again in the next